All right, and we are live with the very first ever live cast of Two on the Vine. I'm with uh, Vinny from Vine Sauce. And hi, I'm Vinny. Hi, hi, Vinny. And, KY uh, told me to get pumped. Uh, yeah, this is my pump. This is my pumped voice. My, just gotta go to the gym <laughs> and pump your irons before you do the live cast. Always. So, so that way they could feel their own veins swell <laughs> in response to your pumping. Then. I haven't pumped since at least thirty seconds ago, so I mean I'm ready for another pump right now. I'm I'm pumping three cucumbers in my right hand, Vin, to get <laughs> to get ready for that. So, uh, how have you been since uh, too many games since I last saw you? A lot of things have changed in my life. Um, for one, I've discovered that I I like to sleep a lot. Could you believe that? Like, you've known me for how many years, and I bet you didn't know I like to sleep a lot? You did, You just discovered this? Are you serious? It's uh, it's a lot of, you know, I mean, it's it's very new to me. But um, after too many games, I enjoyed the comforts of my own bed and definitely spent a few days. Like, and I was busy the day after. Uh-huh. Then the day after that, I was busy. But I eventually caught up on sleep. And I remember I, I like, slept 10 hours one day. I woke up. I was like, oh, no. And then the rest of the day was just me feeling like poop. So that was my um, post too many games, um, I guess, what would you call it? decompression? How about you? Yeah, I mean, it's the same. Anytime I spend more than a few days with any group, I'm just so ready. Like, I'm kind of, kind of an introvert at heart at the end of the day. Like, I enjoy going out and having a good time, but it's nice to just chill in your own place with, with your own video games and do nothing on your own yeah just all alone all alone <laughs> i got my stuffed animals and my my ralph bluton pillow with with its massive boobs and i got my cyber dwarf body pillow that i that i cry myself to sleep with every night it's a good life. i don't know who that is I, it sounds like a mix of of Tyrion lannister and the cyber demon from doom am i correct <laughs> uh Cyberdorf is a little bit of everything that you want Cyberdorf to be. Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, there are some people in chat who I'm sure are going to be very upset that you do not know Cyberdorf. And I think you'll Google it after the, the cast or even right now and you'll you'll feel dumb. But you will know. It just means you have another game that you desperately need to stream. That's all it means. Oh, wow. Look at that face. Oh, that's Barkley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> I got it now. <laughs> Um, so this is our first live cast and, and today we're going to be, um, talking about some stuff, but we're also going to be talking to you guys. I think one of the reasons we wanted to do this was so we can get instant feedback and instant like kind of questions. And, uh, that'll be a little bit later on. Um, I'll leave that up to KY cause yeah, yeah I mean, we, we've got a busy, busy schedule of yeah, well no topics. We'll, prob <laughs> we'll probably spend most of our time taking Q&A from chat. Uh, just hold them for that time. And also, mm -hmm. if you don't have a Twitter, uh, which, you know, all of our promotions through Twitter, so you probably all do, but uh, get a Twitter account because we're going to have a special treat later that needs your Twitter participation. So make sure that's all signed up, ready to go. We won't do it for a while, so you got time. Um, and we'll spend a long, long time doing uh, Ask the Vine or just the, the chat Q&A or whatever. And... But and for now, let's just talk a little bit. So, uh, what? Uh, how is too many games? Where? What's? How would you sum it up in five words? Uh, <laughs> five words. All right. Um, hang on. Okay. Uh, I got six words. How's that? Could okay. that work? Six. Yeah. Okay. Oh God, he's staring at me. <laughs> I was uh, describing the the convention to a few people that it's it was like uh, it was like a JRPG where you'd walk a few steps, a mob would just emerge from the crowds, like a random battle, and <laughs> and it's just the same battle over and over. It's like mashing the A button, uh, mashing yeah. the attack button, just getting through them, and then there's a boss here and there, like. Um, <laughs> Oh, my mic's a tad bit loud. I'll crank it down a little bit. There's a boss here and there where, like, uh, the Noctis that we met. I don't know if he's listening or not, but, yeah. I don't remember. Oh, oh, right, that guy. <laughs> yep, that guy was cool. <laughs> that was a boss um, battle. Yeah, that was a boss. There was a few boss battles, but here's the thing, though. Like, it was a lot of fun, and, and the, the thing about it is 
it, it's weird to like walk around and have dozens of people staring at you. That's strange, unless it's the panel. But there is one thing that I, I didn't really get a chance to say, which is that like I started running out of steam on the third day. And as I was leaving, like you weren't there for the third day. So I was about to leave. And I said, all right, guys, we're going to go, you know, let's let's go eat. And um, it's an hour to go before the con closes. And I'm walking out and still new people are seeing me like that. I haven't seen like Vinny. Oh, my God, I've been looking for you for three days. I haven't found <laughs> you or something like that. I've and been like, searching I'm the con far and wide for you for signs <laughs> right. of the pizza pasta. Right. They, they couldn't apparently find me. So here's the thing. I was already like done. I was burnt. I was spent completely and I was ready to eat and I was tired. So like those people that found me on the way out probably got the worst of me. And I want to apologize to you guys, especially the one I knocked out by punching in the face full foot. No, I'm kidding. I remember um, that. Yeah. Yeah. That poor guy. He had to go to the hospital. You remember that? I don't. Uh, I thought it was a joke until you confirmed that it was real. I guess I guess all those drugs. And there goes oh, his wait. other eye. Because I remember he had an eye patch. He didn't have one of them. And you took this other one. And he's now permanently blind. As a result of your stream and your life, you should really he's consider... Um, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go down that road. But. I'll, I'll quit. I'll quit. But yeah. Steve, the blind pirate, I, I wish you well, and I hope that um, you enjoy your life sailing the seven seas with the help of a, a sailing dog. <laughs> anyway, it was good though. It was a good time, and um, I really, I think um, the thing about it is, yeah, you were kind of like right about exploring the convention, and then you realize, oh God, I've seen everything within like an hour. It was kind of a lot of that because it was a smaller convention. This right. isn't Comic-Con or PAX size. This is very small. It was pretty so, small, yeah. Not like, you know, it wasn't super small. Like there was actually a few things to do and see. So much to do. So much to say. Just never mind. But anyway, I had a good time and a lot of people I know had a good time. And I would do it again in a heartbeat, definitely. Yeah, I, I had a really good time too. I played a few indie games. Um, yeah. Saw some cool tabletop stuff. A lot of merch. Like, for a panel that's called Too Many Games, there were, you know, a disturbing lack of games. Uh, like, most of the games, other than the indie stuff, were tucked away into that arcade room with the ridiculously oh, yeah. loud dubstep playing the whole time. Where yep. I couldn't play a game of Joust uh, with my loved one <laughs> without, you know, being able to hear. We, we, were, we were unable to hear each other in casual conversation, even, like, screaming. Our throats raw. While, we, while you were jousting each other in real life real jousting and we I'll didn't. leave it up to your imagination as to what that means. Yeah. With an ostrich and uh <laughs> and uh, Oh, sweet D. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, uh yeah, too many games was fun. I, I I still I enjoyed it. It was good despite my complaining attitude there due to the lack of games. It was still a really good time. I I look forward to next year's. So, yeah, and the panel was fun and um KY was on stage for a bit and again got um, denied the music questions. <laughs> you know, yeah. there's this, there's this, like, I have to explain this to the listeners because this is amazing. There's this, like, ongoing running joke that just keeps happening, which is people will ask me musical questions, like questions about instruments or, like, anything. And KY will not even get acknowledged. Yeah. Meanwhile, KY taught music for, like, years and he is an accomplished musician. And I'm just some jabroni who plays guitar loud and screams. You're a really good musician, too. You're, you're really good. Well, it's, I don't know about that, but thanks. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it was just funny. Like, there was one time when um, someone even said, like, okay, this is a question for everybody. Because I think he thought we were all in the same band or something. <laughs> but he was like, this is a question for everyone. How did you all choose your first instruments? And you were like, oh, that's a good question. You went in your explanation. Then you passed it to Mike. You're like, Mike, well, how about you? Mike answered it. And then you said, okay, next question. <laughs> I, I totally, person. totally neglected KY. And the worst part is like, I, I joke around about other people, like not including KY in the music questions. I did that hard at that panel. And I'm so sorry. I'd like to no, issue I, I a formal public <laughs> apology. That was not intentional, but in retrospect, it was really funny. It was really funny. I, <laughs> I was just sitting there just like holding back really loud laughter right into the mic, <laughs> which would have been even better. I'm kind of sad I didn't do that. Just start cackling. <laughs> like, yeah. why are you cackling, KY? <laughs> That's what Holy I would do. fucking shit. Like that. Are you the, are you the penguin? 
<laughs> Maybe. Wow, that was intense. Good. It was it was that loud? Did I hurt your ears? No, no, no. You didn't. I, if you want okay. me to do my mother brain impression, I can do that, and All then right. we'll even each other out. All right, let's hear it. I don't know about you, Captain Ann. <laughs> you like that? Good. Yeah, I think what prepped me was listening to the the Zelda Informer and hearing all the the really terrible impressions of Sonic uh, with yeah, the chili the, dogs. Yeah, Sonic. Yeah, and they're talking about how Sonic could be the next, or a Sonic-like character could be the next helper in Zelda. Nope. Nope. Don't uh, want that. You know, after Skyward Sword, they they can't fuck it up. Like Fee was pretty much the bottom of the barrel. For Skyward Sword, or for Zelda in general, for helpers, like, how could they do worse? How? Realistically. A uh, Sonic. Yeah, but they Which won't, they won't do, do, do that. Right, yeah. I mean, it, I'm talking about a genuine attempt at a good helper. They couldn't possibly do worse than Fee was. Fee was exactly. atrocious. Yeah, so I agree bad. with that. And the game was, was pretty good. I During the podcast, I may have... Uh, we, we all may have bashed Skyward Sword a little bit, but deep down, I'd like to clarify, I did enjoy the game quite a bit. In fact, it was one of my favorite games of the year. Um, okay. But it's just not one I'm eager to replay because of uh, Fi and Fee and Foe and Fum and also the motion controls. So. Yeah, see, that's the only part, that's one of the parts where I stand apart from most people where I can say I enjoyed the motion controls. Mostly do, well, not mostly, I think it worked. It was functional. It wasn't really waggle. It had... It had meaning, you know, the direction, the... It did. Yeah, like the angle, whereas coming off the heels of Twilight Princess, which also had motion controls, but in like the worst way, where it was pretty much just directly akin to mashing a button, except you're shaking a controller, you know. Speaking of, I, I want to stream Twilight Princess at some point, but I am not going to stream the Wii U version, or the Wii version, sorry. Um, I, I'm going to probably end up buying the GameCube version so I can play yeah. through that. I, th I think I might own the GameCube version, but uh, yeah, I streamed I streamed the GameCube version emulated in Dolphin, and it, it, it was pretty good. Uh, the Wii version, I don't know. I like the bow and arrow controls. I like being able to point. That's nice. That was awesome. A and, of course, the you know the hook shot. It, it, same thing. Yeah. Same kind of yeah. aiming. And, and there was two hook shots in that game. There was I, the I, you know, left and right one. Yeah. Yeah, the, um, the double hook shot, which was just a, a, or, a simple change. Claw that, shot, I think yeah, it was called. Yeah. Uh, I wish I could just have the button to, sh to swing the sword instead of the waggle and the pointing shooting controls for the arrow. That, that would be perfect. You just you just described my perfect Twilight Princess experience. Yeah. So, but it doesn't uh, exist. Yeah. So uh, what, have you been playing any video games lately that you wanted to talk about? I've been playing Terraria a bit, and uh, I've been enjoying the new update. The problem with it is that... Um, I may have advanced to hard mode a little too early. So one of the new updates, did you ever play Terraria? A little bit. I played a lot more Starbound than I did Terraria. You would enjoy Terraria if you enjoyed Starbound because Terraria, I feel, has just got so much more work put into it over time and it just feels good and there's a lot of content. Um, they doubled, uh, nearly doubled the amount of stuff in the game with this most recent free update. So, I mean, these developers are amazing. Yeah. But... They introduced an expert mode, which is brutal. Really? So once you defeat a certain boss, your world gets upgraded to hard mode, which means harder enemies, like, you know, well, basically, yeah, harder enemies, really, really difficult enemies. So we did that too early. Uh -huh. And now the game is piss hard oh, because Jesus. it's expert mode stacked on top of hard mode so i haven't been playing since that happened but i might go back to it make a new world in any case it's it's i like the challenge except i'm dying constantly so that needs to change otherwise i love that game i think um this update was amazing and, and i i just can't believe how addictive terraria is and, and again you know the starbound experience yeah so picture that even more polished and with more content Nice. I'll, I'll probably yeah. have to go back to Terraria then, if that's the case. Uh, cool. Anything else? Um, just the stuff I've been streaming. Yeah. You know, pretty much. A um, little Counter-Strike Global Offensive. I kind of like to shoot some people every now and then, so that's kind of fun. Um, other than that, uh, not, not a whole lot. I do like how, um, again, this is like Counter-Strike. You, you play it, it's like the super serious warfare game, right? <laughs> Counter-terrorists versus terrorists. And, like, you know, you have um, all these important things you got to do and defuse bombs. And then, like, you look around and people got, like, rainbow guns. 
Right. <laughs> and like guns, guns that look like lava. And it's like, I mean, I get it. It's not that big of a deal, but it's like, oh, this is just hats and gun form. Okay. Right. But uh, I can't believe, have you ever played Counter-Strike? A little bit, like maybe an introductory session. And it was pretty bad because um, I think I streamed it. I streamed a tiny bit uh, just as a total Counter-Strike noob. And people were just like berating me for not getting the basics. And I made it totally clear. I was like, I've never played Counter-Strike and I understand that it's a competitive first person shooter. So I played it kind of like that, but I couldn't like keep up with the pace. I was too busy, like looking through the, the, the shop menus, trying to figure out what I should try or, you know, and just, and meanwhile, everyone's going at a lightning fast pace and, uh, I don't know, didn't have a very good experience. I'm sure I would enjoy it more if, if I just gave it some more of my own time to it rather than a stream time to it. But sure. Yeah, But that game also relies a lot on nostalgia. Like for me, I remember playing Counter-Strike back in the day and, and I really enjoyed it. But the learning curve is high. And, you know, I had to go through the hacking phase where people were hacking all over the place, aim aimbotting through walls. Right. It was it was terrible. But I still enjoy Counter-Strike. Here's the thing, though. Would you spend $100 or more on a skin for your knife in a if video game? If I had a lot of money, yeah, totally. I mean, you gotta you gotta be styling when you're doing that. But uh, <laughs> but as is, nope. Not all right. How it. much how much would you say you saw a really bitchin' skin for a knife? In how, much I, how much money would I spend on it? And you love the way it looked so much. You just it would look great, like and, Jesus's and, foreskin, huh? Okay, and given that I in this situation I play a lot of Counter Strike, I assume. Yeah, let's assume you play a lot of Counter Strike. Well, okay. How much would you spend most for an amazing looking skin? At most, maybe like two dollars. <laughs> Agreed. I was just about to say two dollars. Really? There you go. Yep. You know the the Goya menu is not as strong as you thought. What's Goya? Go beans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, beans. That's exactly what I was talking about. You got it. Um, gotcha. So. Yeah, I mean, I should try Counter Strike again at some point, just like a casual session, maybe with some vine saucers. Uh, yeah, I really miss TTT. I'd like to go back and do that sometime. Uh, yeah, I also miss TTT. I had a good time with TTT for a little while there, but uh, I want to kind of see if there's a different take on that because there's only so much you can do. Like, I wonder how how updated it's become. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I wonder. Uh, but it was a lot of fun when we did it, and um, yeah, that's like the Counter Strike weapons and stuff. So, yeah. But uh, I just don't. Again, I guess the thing is spending two hundred dollars on a knife, and and you know, the amount of virtual currency or the the amount of real money that was uh, sent back and forth over virtual items. This is a topic that I'll never fully understand. Um, it's insane, but you know, it's a huge market, and it worked for Valve, and you know, good for them, I guess. So. Anyway, that's that's pretty much it. Just those two games. How about you? What have you been playing? Um, not too much. I beat Box Boy, <laughs> which I, I slowly stuck with. Like I would play it in the car during the last few weekends during travel. Uh, it's good. Like it's funny because that game was developed by uh, HAL Laboratories, surprisingly enough. That's Kirby. Yeah, and um, hmm. and also I streamed Grow Home, which was made by Ubisoft, and I tweeted this the other night. But I wish that more big companies would put out like really small niche projects every once in a while because it's really cool what industry veterans can make when scope is not an obstacle because that's like the main obstacle for 99 percent of triple a games you know the scope sure. is just massive on like either the world or just the workload and everything so seeing these games like box boy and grow home and them being really polished and really good uh i love both of them uh, so we have box boy, pretty solid puzzler for 3ds. Uh, and I've been playing an iOS game called pixel dungeon, which has finally sated my need for a good traditional roguelike on iPhone or I don't know. It might be on Android as well, but, uh, it's good. Like it, it's very much like brogue for any roguelike listeners in the, in the crowd right now. But uh, pixel dungeon, very, very, very good roguelike dungeon crawler for iOS. Whereas I have not found any other good ones that are traditional. So, it's the so only one. Check this out. Pixel Dungeon. I don't have iOS. It but, might be uh, on Android, because, yeah, I, I'd imagine it is. It is. Uh, I do yeah. like 868 Hack, which uh, Restar and Chat just brought up, but it's not really traditional. Like, I mean, like, really traditional roguelikes, uh, or r traditional dungeon crawlers, at least. Uh, Pixel Dungeon is 
really solid. I oh, like it a lot. I had I had Pixel Dungeon before my phone broke, and I, I used to play it a bit on the train. Yeah, it's it, it is really good. Yeah, but it's hard. I mean, you know, I don't know hard. how to play these games. Yeah, and, like, I, I was killed on the second floor every time. The, I think the key is understanding the the plant seed system because they don't explain it very well. But I'll, I'll just give you a quick rundown because it's one of the few things I think sets it apart un, unique from other roguelikes. Uh, so you pick up seeds as you're uh, exploring the dungeons. When you throw a seed on the ground, uh, a plant sprouts out. Then you break the plant, like like as if it were grass or anything else you might run into, and it has an effect. Like if you put a fire se- fire plant down, anything that steps into that tile will activate the fire plant and set them on fire. Or maybe there's like a, like an earth seed that you you make the plant, then you you step onto it, and it makes like an earthen shield around your character stuff like that like various effects it's kind of okay. like like proximity mines but with lots of different effects and it makes the game really tactical because the game is very much constrained into hallways so you can kind of funnel a strong monster down a hallway or a boss you know put down your healing plant step onto it put down a poison plant in front of you wait for them to step on it like that kind of thing it's kind of yeah i had no idea this mechanic even existed in the game it took me like several uh, several runs before I really figured out how the mechanic worked. Like I tried, I messed around with it, but it took me a bit. I would almost consider that a design flaw in some ways for, yeah. because, but it's not a bad one. I mean, because, you know, if you play the game enough, you'll experiment until you get it. But right. something that seems so vital, you would prefer they would tell you about right away. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, cause they do a pretty good job explaining everything else or at least making everything else accessible enough that, it's immediately apparent how it functions. Like, whether it, in regards to controls or items, it just makes sense. Like, anything that didn't explain, that it didn't explain, I just kind of got. Uh, but the seed thing was the one thing that was, like, new. It's not seen anywhere else, and they don't explain it. So, there you go. They yeah, shit the bed right. just a little bit there. <laughs> just a, shit just, the bed. Just a little bit. Yeah. Remember when you shit the bed at, at the hotel after too many games? Yeah, Mike was not happy. I mean, <laughs> he felt it right against his leg and disclaimer you know. ky did not actually shit the bed <laughs> um that was an always sunny episode that i'm remembering incorrectly you see memories get um confused over time when 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 you live the high life you know because then i start thinking like i'm friends with danny devito and he's pooping in my bed it's weird <laughs> but anyway um i was also gonna say one, one other thing at too many games i wanted to mention uh-huh. was that um Oh, it's gone. Never mind. The thought just just popped out of my head really? as easily as it popped in. Yeah, it's gone. You're on senile, man. Those your brain space has been occupied by the dank memes that you conjure uh, <laughs> on a daily basis. It's it's like your processing power is just eighty percent meme forging. That's you're a, a hell meme of a smith. Sentence. Yeah, you're you're a meme smith. That's your that's your new title. Has anyone called you that? A meme smith. No, I've I've been called a meme smith. Yeah, I've been called a cocksmith as well, which I still don't know what that means. Well, that's the it's... other. That's fifteen more percent. You're eighty percent meme smithing, fifteen percent cocksmithing, <laughs> and then five percent Italian. Five percent, you know, daily uh, essential functions like breathing and eating. And eating, right? Which doesn't take very long because I just ram not, like raw ramen noodles down my throat. <laughs> yep, <laughs> that's my dinner every day. Um, hey, I was curious actually. Did you play that Fallout? Uh, game thing you have iOS. You oh yeah, that. yeah. Fallout Shelter. I did play a bit of it, uh, but just a little bit because I have a 4S, so it crashes constantly. Uh, and even when it's not crashing, it's the frame rate's really low. Uh, I'm actually getting a new phone this Wednesday when my contract uh, renews, so hopefully I'll be able to stream it then. Actually, I'm gonna do a one-off stream. Um, Wait, how do you how do you stream that which is on your phone? Well, all you need is Air Server by the company Air Server for only fifteen dollars. You can yeah, well, but seriously, there's uh, there's a thing. Yeah, it's called Air Server, which is what I use. It's just um, it uses your Wi-Fi connection to mirror the image of your phone onto the screen, and I think it's only for Macs or for iPhones, but I'm not totally sure. But uh, it was like I it was a there's a, like a seven day free trial, and I used it. It worked flawlessly. So uh, I just picked up the license because it was worth it, you know, 15 bucks to stream any iOS game I want. Uh, I've streamed Monument ba- Valley before, which was good. I've shown a few few things, but I'm going to do one off of Fallout Shelter when I get my new phone. That's kind of awesome, actually. I, I, I don't think I've seen anyone on Vinesaw stream Fallout Shelter or anywhere else, really. I'm sure there's a few people somewhere, but I haven't seen it. So that's great. I mean, 
I would love to play that game. I wish it was on Android. In fact, it will my be phone soon. wouldn't be able to handle it. Yeah. My phone is not able to handle it. You know what? I wish it was on Steam. Yeah. Then, or I could play it. But until then, I'm pretty much shit out of luck, which is a shame because it actually looks a lot of fun. Yeah, it, it's pretty good. Uh, like, my only concern is that, or the only beef I had with it was that in the early game, you need to check your shelter pretty much constantly. Like, if you don't check your shelter for more than an hour, uh, which was the case for me because, you know, I, I got to go to work and I can't check my phone for hours on end. Um, if you don't check your shelter for more than an hour, it just goes to shit. Like, everyone just goes ape shit. There's poop smeared all over the walls that say, oh, like, gosh. fuck the overseer and shit. Um, no, but uh, it, <laughs> you can't, You it's like all your resources just drain over that time. Uh, once you get settled in your shelter and, and you have the basics of what you need, it can be pretty self-sufficient for quite a while. But if you're the type that can't constantly check your phone, you're going to have a tough time getting out of the early game. Or you just have to do the early game in a weekend. But um, but otherwise, it was good. Like It the, had a lot of nice UI polish. Uh, the systems were mildly shallow, but they were fun. you know. And I, I like that it didn't shove in-app purchases in your face. They just kind of tucked them. They tucked them right. away if you went looking for them. And if you do find them, it's like, hey, if you want, then there's this thing here where you could throw us a few bucks. You get like a perk in the game and uh, and it helps support us. You know, in, in that case, I wouldn't even mind doing it because right. it's, it's not being forced down your throat. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a few games like that. Or there are some games where they are uh, sufficient on ads and they just say, uh, in, they don't even shove this in your face, but in the settings, they'll say, like, remove ads for a book. Which uh, which I'm fine with if it's a game I really like and I play often. I can think of a few games I've done that with where, you know, I don't mind giving the developers some direct money and just to not see the ads and to feel like I'm supporting them. So Yeah, that's fine by me. Yeah. Um I'm curious though. So music Yeah. Pirating. Yeah. Right. Here's what I mean when I when I bring the topic completely into different territory. So you say you don't mind supporting the developer by throwing them a few bucks. Yep. Say there's movies and music that are yep. free. And there's say you can watch the movie once and then if you want to watch it again you could you could, you know, spend money and uh -huh. you, you donate to the to the producer. Right. Um same for music. Like you can listen to the songs once. Yep. If you can own the album, you spend like three, four bucks, five bucks. Would you do that? Yeah. Yeah, why not? I mean, it makes total sense. Like, How about if it was all free always, but then a message would pop up or, you know, it would be like you're given the option to, to donate a few bucks to things that you like. Yep. Are we capable as people? You and I, I think, would be able to do that. But yep. are you think you think most of us are capable of, of actually doing stuff like that to support a developer if something is free and out of the goodness of our heart, we just throw them a few bucks? Once you're over like 24, maybe. Once you've, weird, you've settled financially, because the thing is, when I was a teenager, I pirated a shitload of music. Uh, like, I'm fine admitting that because I didn't have dick ass for money. How like and music was so important to me that I didn't mind fucking over those bands a little bit. Usually I would find a way to get the albums of the indie rock bands I would listen to. Uh, but if it was like Metallica, you know, don't give a shit. Right. <laughs> uh, right. So so I would pirate a lot of music and it would mean a lot to me because I didn't have the means to spend money on every album I wanted. Uh, now that I'm, you know, have a steady job uh, with the rate that albums I care about are released, I can comfortably afford to buy every album I'm interested in. It's not a huge deal anymore, you know. Uh, I check out something if on YouTube. If I like it, I check out the album and, you know, and buy it. Uh, yeah. I think that's, that's really good. I, I actually respect that. I, I think that's how it should be. Yeah. And the thing is, like, yeah, now that I'm older, now that I, I have a bit of money myself, I can I can afford to, like, buy a Tame Impala album. Yeah. But, I mean, I couldn't wait, so I had to check it out. Yeah, I mean, because, yeah. guys, trust me, I know, we know what it's like to be a teenager with dick ass for money. We, we know, we understand that. I think, I feel that there should be people more sympathetic to that situation. Not to say you're in some crazy plight, but, like... I know what it's like when you are a teenager and you crave new experiences. You you crave these things and you don't have the means to get it. You're going to hurt a few things, hands down. Yeah. With, how, with the digital age, it's how it is. And really, artists, I feel, should work with that a little bit in kind of the way that you said, where you get some leeway, you get to listen to some things for free. 
uh, and then there's other ways to monetize it just to keep them afloat and to keep them making creations. Uh, yeah. And I think that largely that is is like moving in that direction. It's becoming more that way with music with Spotify, where you only pay like once a month and you get all the music you want. Uh, but I don't know the specifics behind where that money goes, so I can't I can't comment. But well, let me let me present this to you because I posted this um, yesterday on my Twitter. I think you'll find this interesting, definitely. Uh -huh. um, so Kevin Parker of Tame Impala, he was asked the question, "How do you feel about people downloading and streaming your music for free?" And he said, "Sooner or later, it'll be free. I'm all for it." Yeah. Um, but the thing is, it's it's about the musical experience that you get, right? It, it could change your life, whether it's burnt from a CD or, you know, you hear it on, on YouTube or right. you bought the CD or whatever. And um, the thing is, it's important. He says it's important to just get the stuff out there. That's why I like the idea of free games yeah. with some things that are not shoved in your face that you can then buy optionally to support the developer. Yeah. I think that's such a good fucking business model. And I'm so happy that Bethesda it, did that with yeah. Fallout Shelter. It's kind of a mixed bag because the thing is you also need to be confident in the value of your game if you're going to stay afloat in that kind of market. Like the guy yeah. who made Axiom Verge made a really fantastic article about pricing of indie games because he they confidently priced Axiom Verge at $20 because they knew they had something special and that that's what the game was worth. It didn't matter that that was above premium price point for a retro indie game because it is like it's yeah. everything goes on to, into humble bundles for you know dick ass money, uh, and <laughs> dick ass yeah dick ass money that's that's the new thing. But uh, it's an album no name. one it, everything's just been so devalued that that it's kind of like poisoned our perception of valuing games like uh, like you could get a box of munchkins from Dunkin Donuts for five bucks and feel awesome. But you know, holy shit. If you have to pay $2 to the people who made Crossy Road or fuck 20 bucks for Axiom Verge, which gives me hours of gameplay. That's such a fucking rip. Why is it not $1? Cause I'm going to get in a humble bundle for a buck. So why should I bother? You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's this interesting thing where you should vet put things at the value you want if you expect to stay afloat in that market. And it turns out Axiom Verge, which they were very uncompromising about, was very successful. Like it, it sold, it was number one on Steam and it sold very well. People went with that because they stood firm about that price value. And because of that, he's going to keep making awesome games. Yeah. So, and that's that's really the core of the argument. It's if you believe in your product and you don't mind there there's there's ways you can go about it. But yeah. look, I'm sure Axiom Verge has been pirated a thousand times, but at the same time, it was still number one on Steam. And that's the thing. Like I bought it on Steam. I did I was not given a free copy of that game. Yeah. You know. I enjoyed every minute of it. It was worth every every of my twenty dollars. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I really think that that's the kind of value I like. Now, one other thing, too, I want to mention from the, the um, Kevin Parker answer was interesting. It's also about how do consumers feel about where their money's going? Who's getting the money? Is it the artist? Is it the developers? Or is it the publishers? Now, for him, listen to this. He said, do you want to know how much money I made from all of Tame Impala's record sales outside of Australia? He said zero dollars. Swear to God, he. This is quoting now. Wow. Someone high up spent the money before it got to me. I may never get that money. He says. Then BlackBerry and some tequila brand or something put my song in an ad, and then I bought a house and set up a studio. <laughs> so, Jesus. you have to wonder sometimes where is the money even fucking going? And in this case, I mean, music, games, two different things, but the distribution, kind of like okay. I, I put all this hard work into something, and now I'm not even seeing a penny of that. Right. That kind of makes people... Whoa, excuse me. Crackles. That kind of <laughs> makes people lose confidence in wanting to support and, and go, you know, the legit route. Right. So I feel strongly about this topic because it's it's just... It's a shame that people are cracking. I think music should also be free. And I think if people right now in 2015, and like you said, over 24, I agree with that completely. If you're self-sufficient, you got money, you got a job, yeah. awesome. They will support people and they will spend a few bucks. Otherwise, let's let's just, just push it out 
for free. Unless we're talking like triple A games, you know, I get it. They need to make a profit. They can't afford to have their games pirated. Right, because you but, have studios of hundreds of people who, you know, need salaries or what would be the point. But Right, uh, to feed their family and or stuff. Or they could, you know. you know, they could also just launch a Kickstarter. Uh, <laughs> and Well, that's a whole other thing, man. Yeah, but we talked about that last episode, so not even going to yeah. bother. Uh, one nope. interesting point to bring up, and I don't want to spend too much longer on this, but Brett sure. Top in chat brought up uh, Independence Day. Have you heard of this? No. So kind of uh, this was also helped. Uh, it was partly organized by Dan Edelman of Axiom Verge, uh, kind of along the same lines uh, or the same point. But it's a zero percent off uh, sale where I think if you just Google Independence Day, like indie games, you'll find all these games at zero percent off and completely under the guise or not guys, you know, completely under the flag of supporting indie developers to the value at which to the price at which they actually value their games uh and you there you find axiom verge 20 bucks you find um you, you find a lot of different stuff there um <laughs> I, I like this concept yeah and and they just say up front like look humble bundles have devalued a lot of this stuff and i still like humble bundles in a lot of ways but i'm i think you'd have to be kidding yourself to say it's not devaluing the shit out of the indie market um and then uh this that is a place where people it kind of just pumped some support into things into those creations at the value that it should be uh and i just thought that was really cool i mean i didn't and that that's that's good and i think again that should be the choice of the developer and publisher right. if they're doing exactly. really well for themselves that's different but if they're struggling to eat yeah and people are like they're getting three cents per game sold on humble bundle i'm with that you know because fucking people put hard work into stuff and yeah, I mean, it's hard to live, especially right. now. It's like the cost of living is is really crazy, especially in some of these cities uh -huh. that the indie devs are based out of. So I'm I'm with that, and I think it, it's it, that's fine. I think that's good. You know, you want to spend 20 bucks on Axiom Verge or 20 on World of Goo or something like that, it's worth it. Those games are great. If it's right. a shit game, like the game I played last night, Temper Tantrum, <laughs> that was a dollar game. That was a $1 game, and it was even bad for a dollar. Yeah. So that's a whole different thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's probably apt to bring this up now, but I did just want to send a very quick thank you uh, to the listeners because with your, I guess with the, the subscribers on my Twitch channel and for the, from the donations from the more generous viewers, it's thanks to you guys that we're able to do this podcast for free, uh, that we're able to keep uh, a free subscription and an ad free experience. So, I mean, I just want to say you guys are awesome. And yeah, it's it's appreciated. You guys are really cool for that, and and on my end too. I just want to thank you all, and um, yeah, it's it's the just shows you the generosity of our audience, but also like I was saying, I do have high hopes for people now about yeah. supporting the things they love, and that's cool. So thank you guys. Yeah, and even the people, you know, at thanks thanks to everyone, all the viewers. So you guys are great. So um, I disagree. Actually, there's a few no, viewers no, I hate. I'm gonna start banning. <laughs> You motherfuckers! In yeah, like all two of them seconds. One, one by one. If you don't start cutting this you, this shit out, you know what you're doing. Don't pretend Spe you don't. Speaking of one by one, did you see Dave Grohl in his his wheelchair rock throne with the guitar sticking <laughs> out of it? I, I saw a thumbnail of it. I gotta find a bigger picture. Let 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 me bring it up. So Dave, Grohl. everyone is losing their shit over this, and they're like, "He's a god of rock." And it's like I get it. That's cool and everything, but my God, Cobain would be shitting in his grave if he saw that. <laughs> that's like that's like the height of opulence right there. I mean, Dave Grohl went from everyday like likable guy in my book to just like okay, now he's sitting on a throne of guitars. What are you doing, buddy? Yeah. So, uh well, he's rich. He could do that. Anyway, um just on a side note, just a little thought I had. Sorry for the uh my mind is meandering a lot today. So, <laughs> no, it's yeah. okay. That is that is pretty ridiculous. I'm showing it uh, right now into the chat. Oh, it's, you are good. Yeah. It's uh it's pretty bad. I but. still like Dave Grohl, but, you know, the, he's getting a little... Now, I don't, I don't really like to talk a whole lot at my concerts, but let, let me tell you something for 30 minutes about <laughs> rock and roll and the power of rock and roll and how much I'm rock and roll. It's like <laughs> me and Mike both have this similar thing where we feel like Dave Grohl is a great guy. Yeah. Respect the hell out of him, like a lot of his music, but like Dave, shut up. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. Yeah. On a uh, last yeah. tangent, uh, non-video game note, I listened to Them Crooked Vultures for the very first time the other day, believe it or not. Did you like it? Yeah, yeah, I thought it was pretty good. It, it kind of, it reminded me 
a little bit of like an almost uh, this is going to sound like i hated it but, uh, like it's like a weaker queens of the stone age uh sure yeah it's not a, the some of the songs are aren't as strong but overall i, I thought it was a really great album uh, i really liked it a lot so i'm glad you enjoyed it it's one of my it's one of my favorites for about half of its songs yeah so yeah i i listened to ha- like three quarters of it until i realized i was on shuffle and i don't like listening to albums on shuffle so okay if it's if I'm listening to one album, I can't listen to it on shuffle. I need to listen to it from beginning to end. If if it's if it's a whole band's discography, sure, obviously. But yeah. But when I realized yeah, I was I'm, listening to that single album on shuffle, I was like, nope. And I yeah. I ripped the cord out of my dashboard. <laughs> Gotta be a purist. I threw I my only phone out to the it window. On vinyl. Yep. I <laughs> know. Uh, I'm with you though, because I will. I like to listen to the sequencing of an album. Just I know we're talking about music a lot, but sequencing on an album is very important. I like an album that flows from yeah. start to finish, and and that's important. A lot of artists are very specific about the way you listen to their music. They want you to listen to it track one to twelve or whatever. A lot of maybe not so much with pop music these days. It's just like here's a bunch of hits, enjoy. But, um, you know, a lot of rock albums are very specific about what order you should listen to them in. Yep. So, yeah. Cool. All right. So uh, anything else you want to say about the video games you've been playing or should we just move right on? Fuck video games. Yeah. Fuck them. So we're going to do uh, two main segments tonight. Uh, We're going to do Ask the Vine, I guess, which would be the general Q&A where we just take questions from chat and we talk a bit about whatever comes up. The other one is uh, green light guess. So, uh, Vinny, which would you like to do first? How about we flip a kern? Flip a kern. A fur How do you feel kern. About that? You yeah. want me to flip a fucking fake kern? Yeah. Flip the uh, fur kern. You want me to flip a Phil Collins? Hang on, I'm going to do that right now. I want you to to flip a fur kern. <laughs> okay, heads is fur and tails is bear. Uh, uh, no, he- heads will be green light guess and, and tails will be the other thing here. I just have okay. to take my word for heads it. It's tails. Green guess. Okay, so we let's do Ask the Vine. So in this, uh, don't spam your questions, please. Like if we see someone asking the same question over and over, uh, it's not because we didn't see it. It's either we didn't answer, want to answer it for some reason or we're just, you know, in the middle of another one. But post your questions for us in chat. Uh, you know, mostly video game related. If you wish, uh, you can stray from that however you feel, but it is a video game podcast. Just keep that in mind. Uh, and we're going to take questions just at random. We're going to catch maybe like 10% of them. So don't be offended. Uh, yep. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, did, did you have I, anything you I want just, to add? Yeah, I just spent the past two days answering hundreds <laughs> of questions on the AMA I did. Oh, so yeah. If you guys got some unique questions for me specifically that I haven't read, I'll answer those. Otherwise, I'm probably not. So. So uh, Joel asked what a Philly sub is, and it's it's more commonly known as a Philly cheesesteak. Uh, oh, do you, do you so want to feel this one? Because you had you had one recently. I have one recently, but I'm also a huge Philly cheesesteak fan. It's my second favorite food officially. Um, really? I love. Yeah, pizza is is still my favorite, but a Philly cheesesteak from Philly is, or even if it's not from Philly, and it's just really well made. It's basically um, thin steak, uh-huh. you know, cook, cooked. Um, you put some cheese on it. In, in Philly, they do cheese whiz, you know, and then you get some peppers and onions on there, a little salt and pepper. Beautiful. Here's the thing, though. Um, provolone's really good on cheesesteaks as well. Yeah. I mean, a traditional Philly cheesesteak uses cheese whiz, which mm-hmm. uh, I'd say fuck that. Even from Philadelphia, I'm not I'm not into cheese whiz on my steak. I'm not into whiz. Steak. So, uh, but yeah, like a good cheesesteak, provolone cheese or pepper jack um, and some cooked peppers some uh cooked onions mm. very very good a little bit of ketchup i think no nope. f- yeah yeah totally I, don't, do. I don't do ketchup i think a cheesesteak is one of the few things that you can put ketchup on and it's kind of just part of what you want out of the taste for me fine but, no that's cool I, I could do it i could see myself trying that out and probably enjoying it but i, I like to keep it pure yeah cheeseburgers right. throw some ketchup on but i like a pure cheesesteak you know the, like like a really just purist. I had a <laughs> Only on vinyl do I listen to my cheese sticks. <laughs> I had a burger with uh, some zesty honey mustard the other day, and it was awesome. Uh, let's see. Let's take it. You, why don't you choose the next question? Sure. I want to scroll up or whatever you want to do. Um, 
Mecha Gamezilla asks, oh, the Mecha Gamezilla. Whoa, hey. Yeah, check that out. We got a special guest. Um, do we have your assurance that the Daily Schmooze will never return? The Daily Schmooze is a podcast I did with uh, <laughs> Mecha Gamezilla. And don't worry, Mecha Gamezilla, it will never return ever. It's but dead. There might be a chance if you'd be up for it, Mr. Gamezilla. Maybe you'd like to have an appearance on Two on the Vine. The other podcast that I do, which yeah. is maybe happening right now, live. Maybe. As long as the Daily Schmooze never comes back, I would be fine with having him on it the won't. podcast. No, Good. never. Or never. Good. Ever. Good. Okay. Good. Uh, let's see. What decides which cons we go to? Uh, mostly just location. Distance. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there, that's, there's nothing melts to it, really. Um do I watch any animated series? Are there any I just want? I've wanted to start watching. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't. I know the answer to this one. Oh gee, I don't know. I don't know, Rick. <laughs> well, if you haven't watched the whole series, you know which one to watch. All right, Morty. Just saying. <laughs> Hundreds of years, Morty. Hundred. Uh, Rick and Morty forever. Hundred. Hundred days forever. Hundred times. Hundred times. Hundred forever. times. Rick and Morty dot com. Adventures. Rick and Morty Adventures dot times dot com. So that's the one that KY should watch. He hasn't seen the whole series, but he likes it. And he is my first exposure to Rick and Morty at PAX last year. Yeah. So that's that's something. But what else? I'm sorry. I interrupted you. Go ahead. Um, oh, I, I like Cowboy Bebop. It's like the only anime that I really, really like. Uh, I know that there's more that I just am not thinking of for whatever reason. I'm going to think of it after the podcast. But um, on a side note, uh, did you ever watch Drunk History like that? It was a YouTube series that was turned into a Comedy Central show. Uh, yeah, I've seen some episodes. I haven't seen it in a, in a while. There's one that kind of had that same kind of gag the, from the 100 Years thing where he's describing Abe Lincoln coming into the room. And he's like, look at this ape with his arms and his, his big ape arms coming in, wailing. His, <laughs> look at this ape. And he like goes on for like three minutes <laughs> okay. talking about his, this ape coming in. But that's why I thought of um, you take next question. <laughs> um let's see um can you play a kazoo with your nose no i can't but you, you, sure? you know what let's try live yeah and I, I can get my kazoo i could try well no wait <laughs> <laughs> hang on okay <laughs> <laughs> you you must have the snottiest kazoo right now in your hand. I could my nose is is clean. Oh I, my God. you know before every stream, I blow my nose, Morty. I like how it didn't work at first, and it got better as it went along. So like the snot from your nose was <laughs> lubricating <laughs> the kazoo and coating it, giving it the a fine ceiling. Coat. The skill ceiling is too high for playing kazoo with nose. It takes too long to learn. <laughs> uh, all right. H have you seen a Paul Blart movie, Vinny? I, I haven't seen Paul Blart, but yeah. Mike wrote a review of it if you want to know how he thinks of it. Um, I haven't seen it. I will one day watch Paul Blart, but I'm going to have to have some drinks. <laughs> um, Mike Hawk Down asked if we're going to pass through Florida anytime soon. I don't think Florida is a, a pass-through state. I don't know. It's I don't no. go through penises. Okay. I don't <laughs> Wait a minute. That's horrible. How do you, how dare you? There's there's oh, people sorry. that live was... in that penis. Yeah. My bad. They got to deal with it. We don't. Um Oh, man. Well, I, by the way, just to let you know, my friend Will is um I have a few friends in Florida actually and they they were back for the weekend and uh I was invited. So I might be in Orlando at some point and if I am, whoa. You know, maybe oh, not hey. anytime soon, but maybe you never know. So if you're ever there, you can just flatly deny that meetup. I'll deny every meet, every meetup yeah. possible. That's every great. meetup for every every hundred meetups. Uh, hundred years. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm gonna stop doing that now. Sorry. Um, someone asked, Desart asked uh, thoughts on her story. Have you heard about this game? No. It's basically it's kind of a murder mystery where you uh, you have access to police archives and you search for keywords. And it brings up like a list of videos and you can only see five at a time and you use those videos to piece together the story behind this murder. 
uh, and you use your, the information you get from those videos to, to know what keywords you should be searching. And apparently it's really well written, really well acted because it's like FMV type game. Uh, like the videos you watch are in FMV and uh, okay. lots of plot twists. And I've been thinking about streaming it sometime. It looks pretty interesting. But uh, What's the name of this game again? It's called Her Story. And if okay, you watch the trailer, I'm... you'll kind of get what's about. It. It's, it harkens back to the shitty FMV games from the 90s, but it's like actually good. Like really good. Uh, okay. I, I will determine right now whether or not this game is a piece of shit. Okay. Uh, looking through the trailer, skipping around. Sk oh, it's a piece of shit, definitely. Uh, well, no, I'm <laughs> well, well. I, I watched a total of five seconds of it in, in non-sequential order, so I'm just kidding. But it, I don't know. It's it's probably not my type of game. Yeah, probably not, but I'll maybe do it. It's totally my type of pretentious bullshit game. Yeah, it might be fun. I mean, it might make for a good stream. You yeah. know, some games do really, really well for streaming, and other games fall flat, but that looks like a good stream game. Uh, here's a good question from Dodgebot. Ha have either of you ever considered a career in QA, like uh, testing games? It can get grading, especially when you tend to play games to relax, but it seems like something that might be up your alleys. Uh, uh, don't you tell me what's up my alley. <laughs> hey, hey, I didn't, I didn't come here for that. That's, that's, that's bad. That's bad. Hundred years. Um, no, I really though. I've never considered it. <laughs> I've considered it when I was younger because it's like, wow, I get to play video games on like, you know, like the '90s kid yeah, wearing yeah. like parachute pants and like the walls are neon, and I'm just giving like a thumbs up, I'm like, yeah, playing video games forever, cool. I get to play but, Sonic all day. Yeah, all <laughs> all day. But but nowadays, um, man, am I lazy? Yeah. So really, the the effort that I want to expend is is video editing and and making music and maybe you know playing music live. That's that's kind of or I'm I'm at where I want to be. I'd say um, I probably wouldn't do testing because it would make me hate games. And and the the thing for me is if I do too much of one thing for too long, yeah, I start to resent it. So that's why I take a break from one, go to the next, you know, and then and then kind of switch back and forth. Yeah. Now, um, I don't, I don't want to hate video games. I, I've considered it, and I've actually applied to a QA position uh, t for a place when I, when I was unemployed here in Boston. And uh, they, they made me send in 10 bugs, which I was able to find relatively easily. But the type of game it was was just mind-numbing. Like, it was, it was a hidden object game. So I had to look in the stupid room that was filled with water with, like, octop octopuses and, like, random <laughs> shit laying everywhere, trophies, a little piano, um, <laughs> like, a bedpost. I had to find the, the ten stupid hidden objects uh, and get <laughs> bugged by, yeah, <laughs> and get bugged by advertisements all along the way. And it made me realize that either, in, it, the only decent QA jobs would be for bigger games like you know grand theft auto and stuff like that and the only way you're going to get those is by years and years of experience doing shitty hidden object find the fucking octopus games <laughs> and i don't want to do that um right. I, I think in concept it might be for me because i do like game design and i like really exploring the mechanics of a game to see what i can and can't do it's like in lisa the first thing i did was jump off a pit just to see if i could i got a game over and then it kick me back to the title screen i didn't have a save and <laughs> so that's uh, literally yeah. the game starts on a cliff you can walk <laughs> left and go away from the cliff and that's kind of what you're expected to do but a game lets you jump right off and i did it because i wanted to see. <laughs> uh so it's i think with that attitude i might like qa but oh well uh why don't you take one okay okay Let's see. Are you hyped for the charity stream? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. I guess we'll just do a full plug of that right now. So this Saturday, uh, which is July 11th, starting at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we are going to be chain hosting each other around the clock for 24 hours to help the Pediatric Cancer Research Foundation. Did I get that right? Uh, yep. Last year, we raised $25,000, which qualified for a research grant. Uh, and we want to try to break that this year. So why don't you guys just bookmark vinesauce.com, uh, maybe save a couple shekels to throw at the... <laughs> Schmeckles, Morty. They're called Schmeckles. Throw, I was going to say, save a few shekels to throw at the kids with cancer. And then I realized that sounded so, 
so wrong. But please show your generosity that day. Come by, watch oh. us play uh, some fun video games, and uh, donate a few bucks. And we're gonna have a really great time, and it's gonna be for a great cause. Gee, this is a PR nightmare. Yeah. Uh, let's throw things at kids with cancer. That sounds like a good idea. <laughs> um, throw your quarters yeah. at them. The Seriously, hardest money though. you can get. <laughs> yeah, just pelt them with quarters. Good job. <laughs> That's how you. Um, that's how you do things and get things done. No, listen. Uh, just come, come watch. That's, it's going to be amazing. Talking about it. Um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I got corruptions um, with a brand new version of the corruptor. I just ooh. got the email about it, and I'll tell you guys more about that at yeah. a later date. Um, but for now, it should be really fun. Yeah, I'm going to be doing the yog with viewers, which you, yes, you. We'll be able to call in and uh, participate in a crazy interactive story, uh, all for, for the sake of money. I did want to thank Hootie, who you can see in chat. And I want everyone to thank Hootie because he has been he has been kind of spearheading the charity streams, and he's put in an immense amount of work into this, and it's he's um, he should be very proud of the good he's been bringing to the world. So I want everyone in chat yeah. to throw up Throw up your kappas and your emotes and whatever, and thank Hootie. Agreed. Thank you, Hootie. Right thank him. you so much. Here, while you guys are thanking him, I'm going to play that sad Metal Gear Solid 2 theme. You ready? <laughs> thank you. Colonel, my nose feels so much cleaner now. <laughs> oh. Please, yeah, I assume you did not. Did you play it? Well, it's bad in either way. Either you played it with your nose, which is bad in itself because it's just snottier and shit. Well, that was now. the automaton. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I was, wasn't the nose kazoo. I was wondering if you took the, the snotty kazoo and you didn't have time to go grab a fresh one and you just unthinkingly shoved it into your mouth. Okay, let me give, let me just tell you, let me tell you right now, I did not actually blow my nose into the kazoo because all I had to Aww. do was hum. No, 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 I just, I hummed through my nose into yeah, the yeah, kazoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you hum, so, yeah. yeah. Hum, hum with your nose. Well, have you, have you ever mm. tried, um, have you ever tried plugging your nose and then trying to hum? Mm. 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 <laughs> it, it's like something about it sounds your Sounds like we're drowning. Your nasal cavity in order to hum so if you pinch your nose and try to hum you can't actually do it for more than like a second you can't because it sounds like you're drowning and colonel i've managed to avoid drowning yeah. thanks Ryden. go back Node. to bed yeah um all right let's see next question Scrolling up i think the chat has all the all the thanking hootie pushed all the questions off the top What's the most unenjoyable stream you've ever done? I've been getting this question a lot, like from the AMA, and, and now I'm getting it live. <laughs> it's what people There's really want to see is the the really unenjoyable, torturous bullshit. That's that's what they really come for. So see, you know, I do that once a week. But here's the thing about it: I like to just do little snippets of the games. I, I don't play too much of them because then I, I would turn into uh, dust, fairy dust, and, and scatter away into the into the fucking wind. So I don't do that. I play them for a short period of time. However, I had to stream all of Limbo of the Lost. That was bad. That was painful. Yet still probably not the most painful. I don't remember the most painful ones, which is why I'm counting on you guys, actually. If, if anyone here remembers some of my more painful streams that I was visibly or audibly upset, rather, please um, let me know. And, and I'll, I'll just throw this one out there. I've got a brand new combine harvester. I'll give you the key. <laughs> that stream was torture. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, the only one that comes to mind, because I've got like a three-month memory, is Naisanti, which was this uh, French game about birth. <laughs> and you, you basically navigate this world of like cubes and black and white, which is actually the art style is okay, but the gameplay was just so shite. That, and I just eventually get really fed up with it. Uh, but like you, I think I'd need some reminders. I know I've done worse, and it's just not coming to mind. I know I only play good games. so <laughs> I mean, you know, that's debatable. But here's the thing, though. <laughs> there, there are definitely a lot of streams that could have been good, but things either weren't working or people were being attention horses. You know, there's, there's always that 
potential as well. So, you know, even good games could have their bad moments. Yeah. Um, you, you'll get the next question. Let's see what we got. Wario Date says Dead Wolf. De- Wolf Dead Wolfwood. Ooh, Is that a yeah. real game? Yeah. I'll, I'll, tell, I'll send it to you after the stream. <sighs> you it's know that means story. I got to stream it now. So you, it, it's it's a little it's a little rough, it's a little rough. Yeah, it, it, you don't look. It gets it gets bad. So I mean, you should play it. Yes, definitely. Um, let's see. Apparently, has has Rust been getting on your nerves lately? Uh, Tunnel Snakes Rule wants to know. Yeah, Rust was on my got on my nerves for a while. It was just um, there was some technical stuff that pissed me off, and then the Weeb Town pissed me off, and then the Goose people pissed me off. Um, but I also get bored of games quickly, so even if the game is good, I just got a little bored of it. Yeah. Uh, here we go. So Thick McLarge Huge has been asking this a few times. Uh, what are the qualities that shitty games that you play, like Crypt Worlds and Fantastic Game, have, and why don't you think these same qualities could make it into once a year games? Well, C- Crypt Worlds was actually a good game because it, it had a lot of thought put into it and it had a story and there were like some quests. I mean, it wasn't terrible. It played well. Um, Crypt Worlds was just a weird game. Um, it could be a once a year stream, but I've, I've, I'm good. I'm good. But what are um, the qualities that, you know, I don't know. Make a once a year game. Yeah. For me, there's got to be some kind of emotional impact. Um, mm. or the game has to be exceedingly fun. Like Super Metroid and Zelda two, for example, are two games I tend to stream often and mario 3 yeah those games are just a lot of fun to play and And chrono trigger i've streamed a number of times because there's this extreme emotional nostalgia that i have for that game that that i just love and so but what is it that makes crypt worlds and fantastic game lack is it the is it that emotional response because i'd say you got pretty emotional with crypt worlds i would say but fantastic games fantastic game is not emotional and it's just short and the same it's so just a one trick pony and there's only so no much point. Yeah. yeah, I mean there look, I did everything I could to make that game interesting and funny and it it's over. You know, that's never going to happen again. It's it won't surprise me. It won't catch me off guard because yeah. I've played like five or six games like that and you know since then. Um and Crypt Worlds definitely I got a little attached to because it was weird and interesting and the characters were fun and crazy. But um I also feel like I'm I'm good with that. Like I don't, I don't feel like I need to revisit Crypt Worlds. However, maybe you can see Crypt Worlds full stream on on Full Sauce Channel at some point in the future. And just one quick announcement: I'd like to just announce that we just hit over one hundred thousand subscribers on the Full Sauce Channel. Nice. And and I just want to thank everyone for subscribing and watching the full streams on Full Sauce. You guys are the best. And thank you for making that channel a success. Me and Vappy both love it, and I know a lot of you guys do too. So thank you. What's uh what's the username on that? Is it just uh for YouTube? I was gonna just post it in chat. Uh, it's just Vine Sauce Full Sauce. Vine Sauce Full Sauce. There you go. And man, Vine Sauce uh. Full Sauce. There we go. I'm gonna link it to you guys. Oh God! And- Sorry, the the intro video started to play, and I heard the 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 smooth jazz, and you go dub dub dub. So. <laughs> yeah. Um. Vinny and or KY, what are your thoughts on pre-ordering and day one DLC? I think we talked about this in episode three with Evolve, maybe? A well, little bit. How do you feel about it? Re- reiterate. Um, uh, I could see pre-order bonuses. I, I don't like day, day one DLC. Never been a fan. Because... I don't know. I feel like that content should just ship with the game. Like, what's the point of fracturing if it's ready for day one when you could just include it with the game and get probably better reviews because it's included with the game? I don't know. What's what's the point? You're right. 100% right. Like, like if they included the, the, um, the Harley Quinn DLC in the latest Batman on day one... Okay, I think this is a good example. Okay, so the Harley Quinn DLC in Batman Arkham Knight, spoilers a little bit, is very, very short. It's maybe it's less than 30 minutes. Uh, it's not extra money because it's just a pre-order bonus, but it's still it's still a fractured bonus that only people who pre-order get, or you I, th- I think you might be able to pay for it. Other than that, I don't I don't know the model. Point is, everyone 
booty blasted them for it being short. They were like, why? That was dumb. It was like 25 minutes. I mean, it was kind of cool, but why bother? Whereas if they included it as part of the game, it would have been seen as a cool little side segment just to break up the pace of the game and give you something a little different at no extra cost. And people would have been like, hey, that Harley Quinn section was great. They wouldn't have thought of it, you know, being 25 minute bullshit. They would have thought 25 minutes of changing it up. So, I agree money, with that. it's a gas. Grab that cash, cash with, with both hands, hands and, and snap, make, make, a snack. make a snack. We snack. Can't. <laughs> it's funny, Skyping and singing in unison or like in, in like synchronized is really tough because you my compressor it. has a delay yeah Re so. remember that too so even if we tried it wouldn't it wouldn't work i think but, they heard um, it synchronized for a second and then it fell apart when you tried to you know compensate yeah <laughs> yeah uh, it's unfortunate that. yeah well i just wanted to say about pre-orders i'm i'm pretty much done pre-ordering for a while because i've been screwed the last few times i've done it you know uh it's it's unfortunate but i had Smash Brothers pre-ordered and I didn't get I didn't get what I wanted and it was it was just disappointing. Eventually I got what I wanted, but I had to search around like five or six other stores to do so. Mm -hmm. So I'm just yeah, pre-order bonuses I think are really just shit. So yeah. Um. All right. Next question. Uh, Let's yeah, see. you choose next one. Um. What's the weirdest games you've ever played? Well, uh, Crypt Worlds was up there. As I, Still, let's try to choose questions that have, like, <laughs> that like I, I some know, deviation from yeah, previous questions. Like I know, and well, I'm not, you know, booty blasting you guys, the viewers over it, because a lot of you just have no way of knowing better. But uh, what we'll try, we're gonna try to avoid questions that have just been asked, like asked and answered ad nauseum throughout the streams and on the forums and everything. So. Um, yeah, I can't think of one. Why don't you, why don't you go for a question? Go ahead. Okay. Um, have you, did you ever play Dishonored? Lid 11S? I played a little bit of it. I didn't finish it, but, uh, I played like an hour and a half of it. I thought it was cool. Yeah, it looks cool. I've been meaning to check it out, uh, either on or off stream before the sequel. So, um, are there any specific game mechanics that you really want devs to stop putting in their games? That's a good one. Oh man, um, the obvious one is clearly, I think, um, what's it called when when they make you do things during cutscenes? QTEs. Yeah. Q QTEs. Yeah, we've we've been hearing about QTEs being no like more QTEs. Of, no more QTEs. We we've been hearing about that for a while though, so I I really don't want to say that one. I, I just I guess I don't like it when I have to run back to my corpse. <laughs> you don't so like there you QTEs. go. No. Cuties I mean, or running back to my core. I don't like cuties or corpses. Cuties are killing video games. That's that. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. Um, <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Uh, what? Well, so I know there's that. I, I I'm not a huge fan of grind. For some people, they like it. It gives them something repetitive to do. That I don't know. It just puts people at peace. But I'm I've never. I I don't like grind. I know that that's a really vague mechanic to single out because grinding can mean so many different things depending on the game uh but at the end of the day if if it constitutes as grinding to me to my personal definitions of grinding then i tend to to call it out as a bad thing uh the only yeah. other thing i would say and i might get some shit for this but tutorials like as in like yeah. holding hands walking you through tutorials i feel like a, a smart game that has abstract or deep mechanics can still convey those things through level design uh like if there's a pit you need to double jump over rather than saying press a twice to double jump they could just make a pit that's extra long and the only way you get past it is by double jumping i guess or I'm okay with that. I, I'd prefer not to go through like a tutorial segment. Like the mandatory tutorial segments are god awful. Thank you for reminding me of that. That is a terrible mechanic. I hate it. But I also think if you do like level one and like, for example, like Spelunky, remember how there was pictures on the wall? Yeah. So like, okay, did, you maybe didn't know there was a double jump. So how about this? While you're walking up to that long pit yeah. in the background carved into the wall right you know in, in the same way the yeah. game is, is arts, right. art style is maybe you can have a plus a no oh that's how yeah. i double jump 
You're totally right, because I guess my example was kind of bad, because how are they going to know you can double jump otherwise? But I feel like there there's two types of games. There's the one that will say, you can double jump and here's how, and then they throw you at things that require double jumping to get by. Then there are the, there's the other type of game that says, you can double jump, here's how you do it, you need to double jump here, try double jumping now, good job, you double jumped. Exactly. You know? Yeah, so. th- there's, there's a whole difference between a light tutorial and an annoying mandatory tutorial. Especially when it's pop-up messages, like not even just telling you, but pop-ups so you have to click through and will interrupt the flow of the action. Uh, you know, that it drives me crazy. Like, Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I, I was trying to play some good Mario games last night, some good Mario fan games. They yeah. weren't good at all. They were terrible. But there were pop-ups like that you had to click with the mouse. I was like, yep, this yep. is great. Yeah. Um, let's see. Well, before we go to the next question, I have a thing. Um, sure. I've been requested to, to do this, so I'm going to do this. Okay. Um, just one sec. It goes like okay. this. Goodbye, moon men. Goodbye, moon men. Thank you. Good. I liked it. Awesome. Now it's over. Yeah, thank you. And it's over. Yep. Um, man, well, you got the show right, at least. Good job, Morty. <laughs> Adam. <clears throat> um, let's see. Vinny, what do you think of what you see in the new Fire Emblem? Uh, asks Zimbabwe and Ghost. I think it looks cool. Um, I'm excited to try it. I like the idea of choosing sides. Um, but, you know... The game has definitely kind of become like there's a, a thing where you can touch the characters and, and get them all hot and bothered, I guess. Or I don't know. There's some weird stuff like they're, they're turning they're turning the series from a combat RPG strategy game. And then it's still got that. But there's also a whole other layer of like waifu building and like waifu touching and, you know, um, I don't know. And then they also kind of like they removed items that break. So now like weapons no longer break, I think. Yeah. So there, the game looks great. I can't wait to play it. I can't wait to try it. I know I'm going to enjoy it. I know I'm going to love it. But there's some things in it that it's like, well, that's not really yeah. for me. That's yeah. for other people. That's not for me. I'm sure some would are elated by the by that shift. But uh, I agree. It's not really for me either. But at the same time, I'm just glad they're trying out different things, even if some of those things are just like inane. Uh, it, I think it'd be better than just flat out another Fire Emblem Awakening, you know? I so. mean, there's different ways you can expand upon a series, you know? But yeah. uh, at the same time, I don't feel like it's a bad thing. It's just not for me. So I'm excited. Can't wait. But, you know, there are some things I won't be doing in that game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, let me answer Joel's question real quick. Um, I will not be attempting to recreate Hadoge for Graf- Graffiti Kingdom. Hadoge, foo! <laughs> because it's he's a very that character model that we saw so so complex. I can barely make a topless Luigi, so I don't know if I'm going to be doing hot okay. I might try it one day. Who knows? Um, and Dazar asks, do you still receive mail from Newman Biggio for Newman Biggio? Yes. <laughs> do you know the story? No, I, I know the name. I so I might have known the story at some point, but the second I get live on the podcast, my memory just goes to shit. I've got the memory of a goldfish right now so. quick quick story um my p.o box the previous owner i guess his name was newman biggio <laughs> and i still get his i still get his mail so wow that is that's quite a name like Isn't i want a great name i really want to meet that guy or at least like look him up on ancestry.com see what kind of background newman biggio came from like what do you think newman what do you think the know, biggio clan did as their you know in their ancestry you want to you want to see what he looks like? I found a picture of him. Really? Are you I, sure? Take a well. Well, you, you found you know, a Newman Biggio. Take, but is take, it? I found. Take a look at this Newman Biggio I found. Oh, that's. I think that is the <laughs> Newman Biggio. It's David Byrne in his big suit <laughs> during the yeah. Talking Heads show. No, I know. It, that's that's what he would look like. It's perfect. Newman Biggio, anyway. ladies and gentlemen, there he is. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Big E.O. Goodbye, Big E.O. I'll tell you later. <laughs> Good. Nice job. Um, let's see. Vinny, or maybe KY, short question. Can I order these Vine Sauce t-shirts from anywhere in the USA only, or is it a USA only shipment? What, Teespring? 
Yeah, yeah. I guess the the vine sauce it's, teespring. It's, a, it's international. It's just a little more expensive internationally. Yep. Um. That's my looking up questions sound. <laughs> Let's see. The Newt. Oh, the Newt News guy. He was on the uh, talk. Uh, who is this? Toxic Avenger just asked about uh, if you heard back from the Newt News guy ever since he stopped. I know he was actually on SNL once or twice, wasn't he? Wait, what? Who are you talking about? Newt News. Uh, like, what was his name? Uh, no, wait, wait, no, no. What am I? There's a guy of? that would send me Newt News. No, I'm thinking of something totally different. Never mind. Are, are you talking about Kyle? Yeah, I'm talking about Kyle. That's what I was. All right, we're of. here live with Reptiles Convention. Hey, can you tell me about the rip Reptile Snap Kick? With the Reptile Snap Kick. When when's their first slime? I'm yeah. sorry. What? When does they first slime? <laughs> that was that. Just look it up, guys. Look up. Uh, what would you search if you want to find that Kyle? Search Wizards. for. Kyle Lizard Convention, so good on YouTube. It's amazing, and and uh, I have not heard from the new news, news guy in recent times. But he, um, Adam, it was just some guy who would email me, or yeah, you know, no, he would I, have I, a I, little. I do yeah. know about it. Yeah, I, I haven't heard from him, but he's also um, well. He just sent me news about newts. Yeah. The the you know the newt. He liked the them. Newt. I liked them. I guess, <laughs> and um, he sent me a lot of those, and then he stopped. And every now and then, he just says hello. So. Cool. Uh, Dicky ten eleven asks, "What's the weirdest shit you've got in the mail, either from a fan or just randomly?" You go first. I got a Captain Picard plate that talks, <laughs> but I also got some other weird shit recently. It's right here in this box. Cyber Trance presents Trance mixed and selected by DJ Dragon. Oh my god! This whole box is just full of weird shit. Hang on, let me let me get a few. I got a plastic pig figurine wow a wooden hippopotamus figurine and a bracelet that says i love ranch oh wait 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 there's another one i got a ticket to a detroit red red, red wings game um stanley cup playoffs from april 22nd 2015 so it's a used ticket uh wow. i don't know why he sent me this stuff but yeah this is there Jesus. you go that should yeah I do not envy you. You you get a lot of shit. And a cloth. The best thing I got was a cloth that actually has Hardo Gay on it. <laughs> it says Razor Ramon, and it's just a picture of Hardo Gay. It's it's like a washcloth, so it's awesome. Uh, I haven't gotten anything too weird in the mail. I've never. I've gotten a few small things from fans, usually who were also close friends anyway. Uh, I don't have a PO box or anything. I should probably do that. Um, but. Uh, I don't know why this comes to mind. It's not exactly male, but it's just something weird I found. I was in an elevator once with my aunt and my sister, and we looked down. I don't know why we did this, but we looked at the emergency phone box that they have on every elevator, and my aunt kind of you know shifts her eyes around and then opens it just to look inside. And inside, there wasn't even a phone. There was just a muffin. That was <laughs> the only thing in this emergency phone box on the elevator was a single solitary muffin. No phone. Nothing else. No, not even wiring. It's like it was just an this. empty box with a muffin inside. Yeah, I love the muffin. <laughs> so that, I thought of that. That's yeah. the weirdest thing that I've gotten in the mail. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's pretty good. I haven't gotten any like anything weird. Like I got I me, mean, I got Vegemite, but I, you know, that's that was sealed. It wasn't just a muffin. <laughs> so <laughs> one time when I was uh, dog sitting, which meant basically, basically, or house sitting, uh, I was staying at. Uh, a close friend's house just watching their dog you know eating their food which they told me to do they were like you know eat whatever you want so on stream once i decided to kind of raid their cabinet and just try try some of their shit and give reviews of it but most particularly i did it with uh nutella which i tried for the first time live on stream so wow here you are trying nutella and yeah. I'm, I'm eating this vegemite shit step yeah, it up not you gotta that, get me. Now you gotta one up me with Marmite. They didn't even send it to me. I just kind of took it out of the stranger's cabinet, brought it, and showed it to the crowd and said, I'm eating this. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, all right. Fair enough. Yeah. This was Merlin's place for those of you that remember Merlin, indeed. Um, all right. Why don't you take a question? We'll do a few more. Not not too much longer. So try to keep them video game related or some some well thought out questions. Um, someone asks, what are the top David Bowie albums I should listen to? I like that question. Um, 
besides Ziggy Stardust, Aladdin Sane, Hunky Dory. Um, all right, well, Ziggy and Aladdin Sane, I would definitely recommend. But I would also recommend um, his newest album, The Next Day. I think there's a really strong collection of songs on that. It's accessible. I would also recommend the album Low if you're into weird experimental kind of stuff. Yeah. And I would recommend, um, oh God, what's it called? Uh, help me out here. It's got um, Scary Monsters on it. Is that the name of it? Scary Monsters? Scary Monsters. Let me I look. Gotta, uh, I'm, I'm actually going to just Google it. Scary Monsters and Super Creeps, yeah. That's the album. I, I, I also really like that album. Um, and The Man Who Sold the World. Th yeah. those, those albums I recommend a lot. Yeah. Um, let's see. Or something. Oh, uh, this is a quick one. Vinny and KY. Oh, this is asked by CZ Backlash. Vinny and KY, what's your favorite international food? If you, you have, one. Um, can you start? <laughs> yeah, I yeah, because because I know you don't you don't get outside New York too much there. Does a burrito count? Then, then, uh, I mean, but that, that, that's not fair to me to say. There's a lot of international food in New York City, but um, yeah, but I, I don't would, I don't try a lot of it. I mean, international is pretty loose when you live in America because we all have our bastardized versions of the, all the international food, like all the food in the world. Uh, but I would probably say Indian food. Like that's the one thing that I don't feel has been bastardized too much. Because like I could say sushi, but I, I would also admit I've never had real, real authentic sushi. Chances are, you know, chances are I've just had some, you know, spicy tuna roll with drizzled spicy mayo all over it um that's probably not real sushi <laughs> right same for chinese food yeah exactly. general so general so is which yeah. if you go to <laughs> here you tell the story you're better at it than i no 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 it's basically what he was gonna say was it doesn't it's not even real and if you go to china and you ask like the top people like the top chefs or anyone really they're like we don't know why general so has anything to do with chicken like he was so. a person but nothing to do with chicken in any way like totally he's, he's got Americanized. A, there's a there's a general so statue of this general and no no chicken nothing to do with it <laughs> so yeah i mean it's it's easy to say chinese is my favorite you know i like yeah i like chinese food i mean uh, look i had spanish food the other day that was awesome yeah and like you know arroz con payo yeah <laughs> point <laughs> you gotta is, say it like that <laughs> arroz con payo. but uh and point paella. is you can, you can say it's your favorite and chances are it, we've never even had the real stuff so the only thing i could feel comfortable saying is indian so pizza it's international pizza. it's from from middle <laughs> unless you get it from chicago and get the deep dish stuff actually i don't know is deep dish considered is there authentic deep dish outside of chicago and outside of america or was that purely an american invention i, I, I think it's an american invention but i think it's also John Stewart described it best when it's just, I think he said it's just like a cake. It's just a cake of like ingredients that make a pizza that aren't actually a pizza. But he didn't even say that. I just said that just now. Never mind. He said something similar. But um, yeah, I have not uh, any interest in deep dish. Sorry. Yeah. Um, that's not the question you asked, but that's my <laughs> answer to your question. No, I like deep dish either. And I used to live in Chicago. So um Serpmeister asks, what in your opinion makes a likable main character and a likable vi uh, villain? Very good question. Uh, do you want to go first or should I take this one? What makes a likable hero? Or spiky a likable hair. main character, yeah. Yeah, Belts. spiky hair, zippers, uh, irrelevance. Big swords. <laughs> uh, questionable past that, it, that he doesn't fully remember. Yeah. Um, no, my favorite type of hero is a hero that doesn't. <laughs> always. Um, my favorite type of hero is a hero that doesn't speak. Because then I can put myself in their head. Um, Interesting. Like Chrono and Link. I like that. But in, in reality, let's just say Zidane is a likable hero for me because he's optimistic. He's kind of got that dark past, but not in a way that it, it's like distracting. Um, and he's funny. He, he's a funny character and he's, he's cool. And he reminds me of like, like there's this optimism to the character that makes me really interested in, in learning more about him and, and yeah. spending time with him. Uh, VV also displays innocence and yet great power when provoked. So I like the characters in Final Fantasy IX. I find them very likable. Yeah. And in terms of villain, I look, I don't, the villain doesn't need to like kill every major character for me to hate them. They just have to be obnoxious and just shitty, like Kefka. Like when Kefka poisoned the water supply, 
That was a pretty shitty move, but not just because he was killing people, but because of how stupid it was. Yeah. Like his motivation. <laughs> totally. Um, I don't have too much to add to that. I think if it's a, if it's a narrative based game, then it need then what makes a good main character and a good villain are relevance, plain and simple. Like if they have a reason relevance. to be involved with the narrative and their 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 pasts and uh, motivations are intertwined with that narrative, then they're probably gonna be pretty good characters. Whereas you have like Vaughn, who is the main character of Final Fantasy XII, which is loosely re- narrative based, but he's so irrelevant that he is shitty. Titus was more obnoxious in a lot of ways, but he was a so much better character than Vaughn, and I would take him any day of the week. Uh, if it's a game where it's going to put you into, if it's like a, a power fantasy type game or adventure fantasy like Zelda. Uh, then I kind of agree with you that the silent protagonist is better. Where they, mm-hmm. where if it's if it's meant to empower you and to have fun in that way, then I would rather not have a complicated main character with lots of personality. I'd rather just have that blank slate for me to project me into. You know, yeah, I like it, the blank. Yeah, the blank slate. Yeah, like uh, it's kind of like I'm playing Infamous Second Son right now, which I, I could have brought up earlier, but I didn't. Um, and while it's a really fun game. Uh, I don't care too much for the main character's constant Sonic-esque quips, you know. Sometimes it can be mildly clever, but for the most part, he's like, Oh, these guys again? Blah! Like, and, <laughs> like, he'll... Or, like, get this, he's totally quiet. He's, like, jumping across the city and flying and all sorts of shit. And because he needs to have a personality, every once in a while, maybe once every 30 seconds, he'll vocally react to one of his movements... So he's zipping around, making no noise. Out of nowhere, he goes, "Woohoo!" That, in the middle it, it of it. Look, yeah, that can go fuck itself. That, oh. that I think is probably one of the most annoying. Like when I say annoying, like I like an annoying villain. Like I no, I like to hate annoying villains. But that is just awful. That's yeah. the developer not knowing how to write properly. Like, uh, yeah. I, how about a charming villain? How about a villain who, like Hootie mentioned, someone who's got like some charm. Someone who's suave, someone that makes you reconsider their viewpoint and be like, yeah. "Oh, like, that's interesting." Like an Ozzy Mendius. We need an Ozzy right. Mendius of video games. So I, I like that. Yeah, that's a good way to put. It. And that's Watchmen. That's a Watchmen reference. Yeah, uh, he was such uh, <laughs> spoilers, but he was such a good villain in that in that story. Mm-hmm. And usually, when Final Fantasy, it's just like the the damaged. Uh, villain, did you know I'm damaged? You know. Did you know I'm damaged? You know I got I'm a damaged? tattoo on my head that says I am damaged in cursive font. <laughs> you see, I think you really get me, and I'm glad that you know I'm damaged. Um, <laughs> so there's too much of that. Um, Kefka is more interesting than a lot of them because he's not just. Did you know I'm damaged? But, right. Um, and, and Magus from Chrono Trigger, someone said in chat, I, I like yeah. Magus because you get why he's doing what he's doing. And he's he, not even yeah. really a villain. He's kind of a vi- he's a villain for some of the game, and then for other parts of the game, he's like an anti-hero almost. And I like the, I like how deftly he was able to switch, and it still felt really, really natural. Yeah. And getting to know his viewpoint made him a very interesting character. Yeah. Um, okay, we should probably wrap up this segment. What? I think we should do one more question each. How do you feel about that? If we can keep it short, just because with hosting, super short, I, I can't go over a certain time or I can't go over a certain amount with the file size. I could always well, press it more, but how um, about this then? Um, for both of us, how do you? How is it to be usually pelted with game requests? Do we? Do you um, like? Like how yeah, do you for, feel? About for game a while, requests? I could, I would get bitter over it. I'd be like, just leave it to the thread. Don't bother me with that shit. Um, and then eventually yeah, I realized I was kind of dickish of me to constantly expect, especially new people, to latch onto that or to figure that out, like, totally uh, off the cuff. So I expect it. If I don't feel like answering it at the time, I'll just kind of brush it off. Other times I'll, I'll just lay a blanket statement like, oh, yeah, I mean, here are some things I'm thinking about streaming. Or I'll just flat ask, like, what do you guys think I should stream? So I kind of try to incorporate it into my commentary and what I do without constantly humoring them and without totally pushing those people away because it's going to happen you know it's it's part of being a fan of what we do and to stifle that i think would be kind of shitty of us 
Yeah, I, I definitely feel like um, I, I think the game requests I get through email, for example, some of them I do, some of them I don't do. Yeah. Um, I just tell people I'm chances are I'm not going to do it, but yeah. I will see it. And if I can, I will. And I found a lot of great games that way. Yeah. So thank you for the requests, guys. Um, I can't keep up with all of them, but I do appreciate them. Yeah. And uh, the last thing I would say is the only case where it really annoys me. Uh, and I still just brush it off these days, but when, don't do this, don't be like, hey, Vinny, you ever stream Ocarina of Time? I think that would be a great stream. You know, uh, <laughs> just don't, don't bother. It, it has yeah. a little bit of common sense when you ask if it's something more obscure, you can say, hey, have you heard of this? Uh, and usually I'll, I'll, I would, I would tell you, but, um, mm -hmm. yeah, is, is that it? That's it. Okay, yeah, and like I said, guys, I know that some of you have been asking your questions a lot and that we missed a solid 90, 95% of those questions just because for the sake of time, that's that's all we had. Uh, but we'll, we're going to do another live cast event, uh, eventually. We're not done with this one yet, but uh, this will happen again, maybe in 10 episodes or so. Uh, sure. So I, I guess that's it. Thank you guys so much for your thoughtful, good, funny, terrible questions. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to answer questions live. I feel like it was it was definitely a way to um, get in touch with you guys a little bit, whereas email can sometimes be a little slow. So I do appreciate the the immediacy of what we just did. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Um, okay, let's do green light guess, shall we? <sighs> oh, that's a yes, by the way. Yeah, that is a yes. So here, <laughs> you guys are gonna help green light guess. Uh, for those that don't know, I use a Twitter account called, uh, this is not mine, but I reference a Twitter account called Greenlight Gold, which basically references real Greenlight games that are intensely shitty. Um, I call some of my favorites, and then you guys supply a bunch of fake descriptions of games that don't actually exist. They're just made to fool Vinny into thinking this is a shitty game that's on Steam Greenlight. And then I present them to him, and he guesses whether it's a real Greenlight game or one that you guys made it up. Made up. Uh, so we're going to do this for the first ever green light, green live guess. So green light guess live. You are going to use the hashtag green light guess one word. I'm going to post it in chat. This is on Twitter. Hashtag green light. Yes. Give us your shitty, uh, descriptions and I will monitor this feed live. And when I want to do a fake one, I'll just pick one out of there that catches my eye. So we'll see okay. how good you guys are, uh, the viewers, at coming up with stuff on the fly, your improv game, and we're going to stack them up against some of some of my favorite real ones that I've culled from Greenlight. Yeah, sounds great. Uh, we got to do the jingle first, okay? Yep, ready. Okay, good. So, uh, like I said, hashtag Greenlight guess. That's all you need. Let me bring that up, and I'll decide what I want to do first. All right. First one, are you ready? I am ready. Actually, I, let's give it 15 seconds so that people can like get a chance to type out what they need to type out. Cause, you know, sure, sure. Cause, yeah. So, uh, you want me to do another jingle? Yeah, one more. Give us another jingle while we wait. Okay. Green light guess. It makes me feel good in my pants. Green light guess. Okay. All right, first one. You ready for this? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm ready. Max's Big Bust is a buddy cop romantic comedy visual novel by the author of Gender Bender DNA Twister Extreme. Nope, fake. That is real. The game oh, is called no. Max's Big Bust. I'm going to link it in chat. <laughs> oh, no. Yep, I decided to start with a real one because I knew that you'd... You know, I oh, think I would go I, fake. I don't want bat. this to be. I don't want this to be real. I'll, I'll click them in the chat. I'll, I'll click them in okay, the chat. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, Max's big bust is real. A Captain Nikorai tale, and it's funny if you watch the trailer, you see this guy that's like normally built, and his suddenly breasts shoot out of his chest and everything. And then at the end of the trailer, all his clothes just fall off his body or her body, uh, oh as if he God. was some crazy fat ass. And yep, I'm watching it now, and it's it's making me upset. It, it, like the, the laws of physics do not apply to this universe whatsoever. I I don't know, man. 
I don't know. I, can we can we go back in time and make this a fake game? Um, we'd maybe. have to like tell the developers to, to stop. <laughs> Hang but, on. Someone let's... said they want me to show the footage on stream, and I think I can do that. Just give me a second. Um, on. I'll just do it on my other monitor completely. That'll make it easy. Monitor two. There we go. So I'm gonna play just a tiny bit of this trailer. Max's big bust. Yeah, that's extraordinarily. It's at, it's funny because the animation is not awful. No, it's decent animation. It's just what is going on here. I don't know. I like then the clothes fall off. Like you said, like yeah, like everything's all loose all of a sudden. It's uh whatever. Yeah, it's, someone will vote for it. Anyway, what's uh what's next? I'm ready for the next one. All right, next one. Hmm, where was that tab? All right. In game, you control a block of interest. To reach the goal to build a castle, you can click on the zombies in the mansion. Uh, <laughs> you can click on the zombies in the mansion. You can click on the zombies in the mansion to build Thank a God. castle to reach the goal. Thank God. Uh, I'm going to say that's that's fake because there's, there's not enough there. Yeah, it's a little bit bare there. Uh, yeah, t put some thought behind it before you, you click that submit button. Make it really, really saucy. But that Honestly, was, I, I was afraid that was real, just to yeah, let you know. I, I thought about doing two reels in a row, but uh, that was submitted by the True Derpy on Twitter. So there okay. you go. Uh, one man tries to survive in the woods while chopping down trees and his many dinosaurs. Also sex. Lots of sex. Oh God! Um, so he's what is he chopping? He's chopping down trees and dinosaurs, or and who's he having sex with? The trees or the dinosaurs? <laughs> chopping down uh, trees and as many dinosaurs. Uh, I don't know. It's a good question. It's it's it. Uh, it's, you have to it's watch the enough. trailer. It's because... dumb enough to be real. I'd say real. That is fake. That was submitted by <sighs> Flaunty underscore zero. Womp womp. So you, uh, I'm not keeping score, by the way. You guys in chat can keep score this time. So you've gotten what one right? Yeah, I got, got one. First fake one. <laughs> I got okay. one out of three so far. All right, you ready for this one? Uh, I guess. <laughs> Frozen <laughs> Elsa minion baby cesarean section game. <laughs> oh. Is this like Frozen all off Give Daddy Cummies? Give Daddy, yeah. That was a uh, previous fake. screen light. That is fake. That was submitted by Kazakami. I think I think the Frozen Elsa Anna thing, uh, it's funny because you could make up any description. Chances are that despite you making it up, it actually was real somewhere. There is a real Frozen Anna Give Birth a Baby from the very first green light. Right. Yes, that was real, but every other one has been fake. Right, right. Like okay. uh, Frozen Olaf Give Daddy the Cummies, most infamously. Right. I'm going to need a cummies emote on my <laughs> Twitch channel once I God. get enough subs. I don't even no, know this... what the cummies are. Don't do but... it. Don't do it, guys. <laughs> All right. Another one. In Cooking Witch, you play as a witch flying to a party in the woods, abducting the children and cooking and eating them. You can upgrade your gear, such as your broom, cauldron, and equip hooks to be able to carry more children. Cook and eat as much meat as you can, but watch out for the angry daddies, or they will hunt you down. <laughs> the daddies? <laughs> yep. What? With a capital um, D, the daddies. Oh, God. All right. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I think it's real, but but here's why I think it's real, because it's it's stupid. But, but more so than that, if it is real, someone's going to end up complaining about this game somewhere, that it's promoting, like, child cannibalism. <laughs> so, but yeah, I, I'm going to say real. Hit is real good job it's called uh cooking witch like i said now i want you to watch this trailer and i'll show it on stream too there is a sprite for this witch that i cannot figure out what the fuck they're going for with it like when you see this witch you're just gonna squint at it for a second trying to like make some sense <laughs> and it just doesn't it's like this green thing with like an obelisk nose and i don't i don't even know Okay, I'm looking, I'm watching. It, like, uh, it hasn't like, come up Like, pause yet. for a second when the witch shows up. 
and try to figure out that witch sprite. It has like shades, a weird little pillar for a nose, uh, like goblin ears, green face skin. Oh, oh, that is ugly. What is what the fuck? Oh God! And the game is really fast and stupid looking. What is this? You you pick up. I don't the know what the the face. She looks like a garbage pail kid. The thing is, one thing I notice is it doesn't look. Everything else besides the witch does not look that awful. The trees in the background kind of sway. It, it's a nice effect, and every the rest of the aesthetics besides the stupid particle trail are decent. But that witch, yeah, what the, the witch, fuck is the that? Witch, face? She's got like a snout nose. There's like a snout nose, and she's her face is green, and it's like a, again, it's like a garbage pail kid, but like a very poorly designed one. Why does she have shades though? Oh, the, the shades. The face kind of reminds me a little bit of Immortan Joe with the, you know, with the thing over the mouth. Oh, yeah. Just vaguely. Yeah, I remember it. Immortan Joe. Yeah. Him and Crumbopulous Michael go hanging out on the weekends. Yep. That's a reference you won't get, but I'll one day. One day. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Those yeah. trees look nice, though. Gotta say that. Whoops. Did not mean to kick. Yeah, the game like looks, looks decent aside from the witch and the gameplay, of course. Yeah. All right, let's see what we got here. I didn't think that a game about playing as a 9-11 plane with the sole purpose of flying into the towers would be that bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. No. Is that it? That's it. That's Well, that's, that's as no, much as you get from on. the description if it's real. That's That's not real. That is fake. That was submitted by uh, Javier... Kimochi on Twitter. Nice job. Oh my god. Could you imagine if, <laughs> if that was a game on that would get so many complaints that shit would be removed and while well, you would think it would be at least. Alright. <laughs> but that was funny as fuck. That was good. Alright. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh <laughs> play as America's greatest president. You are Bush. Play as an American <laughs> icon and hero in this one-to-one -one representation of Bush's life and career. In this game, you will be able to remove your country from peace treaties, plan 9-11, plan <laughs> cause the deaths of thousands of innocent civilians and soldiers, cheat on your <laughs> wife, bring tensions in the Middle East to an all-time high. Oh, and, and that's this all that's there. I, look, this is going to be a coin toss because I could see that being fake, but I could also see someone going for the shock value and making that like a shitty flash game. Um, I'm going to say it's it's real. That is real. I thought that doing two 9-11 ones in a row might might do you, but this one is called Bush Simulator 2001. Absolutely 100% <laughs> real. Uh, and I love, love the screenshots. It's so good. Hey, George. Good to see you. You look like you were lost. Need some help? <laughs> Why is he so stretched? I know. And he, every he, screenshot, he's like that, too. It's like <laughs> Every screenshot, he's stretched. And, and Condoleezza Rice is stretched and coming out of the side of the frame. Yeah. <laughs> T.Y. Condi, I love you. <laughs> and every screenshot, he's stretched. It's like they got a generic picture of the Oval Office, and they had to squeeze George in there rather than just find a better picture of the oval office even the oval office i think is, is squished i don't i can't tell but i i love that one of the options in the um in the dialogue tree is s-u-k my dick d-i-k <laughs> yep and with that like mass effect style bar yeah it's definitely this is just exactly what it was like to be also Bush, note at the bottom this game will cost 59.99 if it makes it onto steam in the hopes no one will accidentally or purposefully buy it Wow. Okay. Well, I, I don't think it'll be coming out anytime soon, but he spent a hundred dollars to get it on there. So good for him. Yeah. Good for that guy. All right. Trouble in Squareland tells, <laughs> tells the deep story of Babtu, a brave, <laughs> but tiny square in the world of Squareland fighting against an evil camera gone crazy forever zooming in. How far will Babtu go to save Squareland? It only depends ba on you. Bab two spelled B A B T O O. Okay. Um. Like I call SpongeBob SpangBab, and I've had like the word Bab pop up in a few streams, so I'm gonna say that's fake. 
that is, I'm going to leave you a suspense here while I type this. Hang on one second. I'm, sa I'm saying to the chat, if you want a longer description, screenshot or paste bin it because the length matters. Um, that is real. The game is called Trouble in Squareland. You, you know what I think gives it away here? What? Is the part that says it fights against an evil camera uh, forever zooming in. It's like someone built the brokenest Unity bullshit. <laughs> and they had to spin it into like a legit, uh, a legit, whatchamacallit. Like a um, feature. Yeah. Yeah, like, forever yeah. zooming in. A fight against the evil camera forever zooming in. Hey, I'm derping with this link here. Because that's, goes. I mean, when I think about video games I love, I think about fighting against the camera, definitely. Yep. I've not watched this trailer yet. Let's take a look. It doesn't look terrible. It, I mean, maybe in 1989 I would have played this and have been like, oh, this is interesting. But uh, this, I mean... You know, stabbing yourself in the dick with a needle is also pretty interesting compared to this. So, I don't know. Um, our audience are over the age of 18, right? Bring other squares with you, it says. You know, and aesthetically, this isn't horrible. Like, at least the filter is a nice little gimmick. I guess. I'd rather not. Um, I'd rather not play this, to be honest. No. But um, hey, yeah, and also, I'd, I'd rather not gather extra blocks to come with me. There was something that popped up on the side of the screen that I want to read. Zoom in losing, it says. for It just flashes for a second on the left side of the screen. Zoom in losing. And then disappears. Wow. Trouble in Weird. Squareland. I, again, like, I'm not turned off by it so much as I'm just bored by it. Yeah, it's supremely bor uh, boring. Boring. It's funny, in regards to camera gimmicks, there's an actually legit good game called uh, Bird Song, where the entire game is on one screen, but it the center is like bubbled so you can see n what nearby things are, and far away things are stretched to be small. Uh, look, why don't you just Google it? Uh, if anyone chats interested, it's called Bird Song. It's actually really interesting. Um, okay, anyway, back to the funnies. You ready? Mm-hmm. What if scientists invented a brand new form of biological energy able to convert dancing moves to real power? Oh, fuck off. Off. Oh. Is that it? That, that's all I'm giving you. Dancing. Fake. That is real, actually. No, what? Name... We're dancing. Yep. Yeah, the name of the game is Dance Magic. When this was actually released on PS3, apparently. No uh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Dance. Oh, wow. And the quality is pretty high for a shitty green light game. It's just like, it's the shittiest uh, description. A man's got what is yeah, the description's dance terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look horrible. I mean, it's not something we'd want to play, but it's kind of what you'd expect. It, the, the standard dancing affair, right? I like how there's a character that looks like Baron Samite from James Bond, with <laughs> yeah. the, 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 the skull face. <laughs> he's like just a normal, like I'm supposed to just accept that he's a normal dancer. Yep. That, yeah, like nothing weird's going on here. Like, yeah, he just, he's just competing in the dance, in the dance competition and turning his energy, his dance energy into real energy with which to power toasters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here, that, it's funny because I, th I subconsciously thought the same thing. I was like, he looks familiar. Uh, what is it? Uh, but there you go. Uh, next one. Let's see what we got. Collateral Doggage. A first-person game about being a dog and eating your own poop. No, because... <laughs> no. I mean, there's it's a lot fake. of knockoffs. Consider, like, you see, like, by the hundreds, Minecraft by Vinsauce, you know, stuff like that. And that's the title of the game. But you were right. It is fake. It is submitted by Kazakami. Okay, because I played Cat Lateral Damage, and that's a first-person cat simulator where you jump around and knock shit down. But I can't... I mean, you know what? I could see a game like that being real so easily. I see the chat was fooled by it. At some, least some of the chat. Some of them, yeah. Yeah. Um, next one. Refined, the 2.5D tale of a young blacksmith and his anvil-turned-dog that explore a world where fire has disappeared. What? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, uh, that is a weird, this is a weird plot line. Um, fire has disappeared. How? What do you mean fire has disappeared? It, it, there, I, I'm, I interpreted it as fire cannot like instantiate any more, any longer in this world. 
I mean, to me, that also says this world does not have oxygen, and that's the plot twist. Maybe, maybe it turns out he's on Mars, and he needs to science the shit out of that world to get that Jupiter fire back. Jupiter and Venus, <laughs> space and planets. Oh, but sorry. Um, real or fake? I would say that's real. That is fake. That was submitted no. by none other than Hootie. That was who? Oh, yeah. There you go. Wow, that's that's interesting. Cause you know, you know why I thought that was real. It <laughs> was just intricate enough to right. sound like something stupid on green light. Exactly. God damn it. You know, a wordsmith like Hootie, it, he can pick apart what works in these descriptions and what doesn't. And like the the vital bits and the parts that people always include in their fake ones that are gonna tip you off. And he he got you, man. He got you. Uh, All right, you're gonna like this next one. You ready? I'm ready. Staten Island Ferry Simulator. Live your dream as a New York <laughs> City ferry captain transporting the good people of Staten Island. Oh, God. I, I, that's, that's fake. That is indeed fake. That was submitted that's... by Bredotop. There you go. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Um, despite it being fake, I would play that. Just saying. If, it's re if it was real, I would play the fuck out of that one time. <laughs> But let, let me also mention that the Staten Island Ferry is fun the first few times you take it. Yeah. And then if you work in the city and you and you just take the ferry constantly, it's like just a 20 minute like <sighs> just just dr like draining kind of you just stare out into the open ocean wishing you were one with the sea. It's it's not fun if you do it every day, but um, it is a great tourist destination. So, you know, I could see why people like it. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Make your meme with new meme maker 2015 with doges and backgrounds. Impress your friends and upload photos with funny game. <laughs> real. No, uh, real. That, real. Wait, mm, real. Is that your final answer? Yeah, that's my final answer. It is fake. Oh! That, that was submitted by RDNX. And the thing is, that's a good one because there's a lot of shit that's actually like that. I know there is. There is like there is one called. Uh, this is a real one, and I didn't include it in my real list because it was too. I don't know, but it was called like Shrock's Adventure, and you're supposed Shrock? to find. You're supposed to find the Shrek pictures on this world, like of memes, and yeah, it's it's real. I mean, well, I like, that one's like real. That. This one's fake. Uh, right, right. Shrock. Shrock. And let me. Shrock I'm gonna, is real. I'm gonna scroll down to. Uh, I'm gonna scroll down and see some of the the older ones rather than take ones off the top. It's so funny. Uh, the people there, there's always a handful of people that submit real ones, which is fine. Like if they're funny, I include them. But every single time I go to compile green, like guess someone submits burrito galaxy. Yeah. I, and it's, it's funny cause we, we are very aware of burrito galaxy. Oh, yeah. I've streamed burrito galaxy and it's actually really good. Like if the demo is still up, I'm not sure if it is, but if the demo is still up on the page, get the demo, play it. It's a good game. Like, Really good. Um, all right. Whack-a-man. Become a hitman oh. as you use wacky methods to take out your targets. Fake. No. Wait, let me think about this for a minute. Whack-a-man. Would you like me to read it again? No. Uh, yeah, go ahead, please. Whack-a-man. Become a yep. hitman as you use wacky methods to take out your targets. Fake. <laughs> That is fake, yeah. It was uh, submitted by Persistent Pasta. That's persistent of you, Mr. Yeah. Pasta. Mr. Pasta. All right, next one. Rude Bear is a gangster bear from <laughs> East London who is summoned back in time to medieval England by his mortal nemesis, the wizard. The wizard. Oh, the fucking wizard. The wizard. You know, <sighs> the wizard. The. The wizard. Um real that is real you are indeed right it's yeah. called um shit i don't even remember what it's called you can click oh i just posted it there instead of in chat there you go it is real and you need to say it in a like an east london gangster accent can you do that is that i bet that's one accent you can't do super rude bear resurrection that's <laughs> scottish i don't know what the hell that was but <laughs> it's a it wasn't accent. what you asked yeah. There's there's a movie if you want to do some research into this accent because you need to add you need to add it to your arsenal just in case you're ever on a podcast <laughs> and someone asks you to do this accent watch yeah. the movie Attack the Block 
Oh, uh, yeah, no, I've seen Attack the Block, actually. That's okay, a great so, movie. I just yeah, don't remember what they sound like in it. I, I think that's the accent that you need. Super and, fucking bad as action. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. And the thing is, it doesn't look too bad. It's kind of super Meat Boy-ish with a twist, uh, a solid central gimmick where you use your corpses to help you. Like, yeah, so you it die looks all right. Them. Yeah. Like, I would, I would check it out, at least. It's a bizarre, like theme and name right, but I mean, then again so is meat boy so it work it works well i like it i i would probably give this a shot you know so yeah good good on these guys for making a game that doesn't look like complete dog shit yeah i mean just like it looks like dry dog shit that you wouldn't mind cleaning up <laughs> like white dog shit that you might lick if it's out in the hot sun long <laughs> enough yep uh let's see let me close a few tabs real quick okay you're ready for the next one yeah. It's cold, damp, and too colorful for any ocular organ. Venture through the happy hell that's deep within us all. What? What the fuck? Yeah. Um. The happy hell. The oh, happy you hell. Want to read it again. Yeah. Can you? It's cold, damp, and too colorful for any ocular organ. Venture through the happy hell that's deep within us all. I can't in. My wildest dreams imagine what style of game this is, if it's real. Like, I, I don't know. I, I, would it be an adventure game or... It's fake. You venture through the, the happy hell. It is fake, yeah. It's, uh, it was submitted by Salty Pretzel. <laughs> <laughs> which is a good name. Uh, happy hell. Yeah, happy hell. All right. Fame Douglas. Fame Douglas, founder of DOATC, creates a fighting game tournament. There's a boat. There is a boat. There's a boat. <laughs> that's the okay. All right. That's, that's the punchline in right. this one. Obviously, like if it didn't have that, this would not go on this fucking list. But there's a boat. There is a boat. A boat is involved. It's like there, it's a it's feature like, of the game. When they when they put their feature list at the bottom, that would be included in it. There's a boat. Like, it's got 50-plus levels. There's different visual filters, anti-aliasing. There's a boat. You can, <laughs> you know. It's like when you when you talk about sex and at the very end of it, you type, and Wario is there. And Wario is like, there. Or Wario's and just watching. Yeah. Wario and Knuckles, just there. They're just, yep. they're just there, always. I'm going to say that's fake. That is fake. That was submitted by G. Frodo. Oh, I mean, again... Part of Wait. me almost believed that that was real. So and good job. Got for... a lot of followers that I know. Apparently, uh, do, do I know this? G Frodo, it's GPM, I think. Oh, it's GPM. Okay, I did not know that. Well, there you go. Yeah. GPM. Uh, let's see. Explore a retro-inspired roguelike Metroidvania live-action world, starting start starting your favorite YouTube Let's Players. <laughs> um, is it really spelled starting? Oh, wait, hang on a second. Here's Apparently this Happy Hell game is real, which means i got to explain how, how green light guess works again. Uh, but, yeah, let me, I just linked it in chat. Apparently this is real. It's just someone just submitted the description. So, Happy Hell. Okay, well, there you go. That's real. Oh, no. Oh, no, it's real. Oh, no, look at this. Wait. I gotta, I'm watching it now. It happy Hell. It does, doesn't look terrible, actually. Kind of looks okay. What is is that? Oh my god! Oh, it's so weird looking. I I think I want to play this. There's like noses in the sky with wings, and and you're in hell, and you're a cat, and Felix the cat, but not really. <laughs> with a, a gigantic red dick nose. Red red dick nose. Wow. Oh my this god! Is... This is this is so weird. Oh. You use your nose to defeat feet. All right. Well, huh. I, I might have to try this. Um. Anyway. So, yeah. Okay. Real, real quick. Green light guess. You are submitting fake descriptions, games that don't actually exist. Don't go hunting for games that do, because I got my own list of those. We need the fake ones. We need the ones that you're trying to fool Vinny into thinking are real. And We're it, but if you do include a real one, and just include the link to the game, so that I know it's a real one. Um. Anyway, back to the other one. You ready? Explore a retro-inspired roguelike Metroidvania live-action world starting your favorite YouTube Let's Players. No, that's fake. That that's is fake. fake. That was Regality. So. 
starting your favorite YouTube yeah, Let's Players. Starting, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and I like that it's a, what is a live-action roguelike fantasy game. It's like, what? Uh. Yeah. I mean, we get, there are a lot of those descriptions where describing the mechanic when it's such a blatantly overdone mechanic, that's super common in the fake ones to the point where I'd like try not to include them too much. Uh, because usually the ones that are so unbelievably shitty and real don't include things like it's a 3D stealth underwater plat, uh, you know, uh, escort mission. Right. There are, there are I still tend to get these. Yeah. I still tend to get them wrong anyway. So, yeah. All right. Hang on. This one is, I can't even read this. Okay. All right. You ready? Mm hmm. All right. Bro id is a simulation realistic comment of the fact that can be an artificial intelligence of ground extra origin. What? Has anyone been so far? Even as to even look, want, do more, look, do want, like. look more like. Are you ready? Should I read it again? Yeah, please. Okay. Bro id is a simulation realistic comment of the fact that can be an artificial intelligence of ground <laughs> extra origin. It's fake. That is real. Believe no developer would do this, that. No this... developer would put something so uh, fucking obtuse and so difficult to understand as the description for their game that they're trying to sell. It's true. Maybe they would. It's Maybe called would. the game is called Bro id. Uh oh my god. And here's more of the description. An artistic game which will make you think, which will leave you in total autonomy. You are not human. You are enemy of the human beings. And I'm about to watch this trailer with you. Let's watch. Bro id. There is no trailer, KY. There, there's some kind of... Skip around. Oh my god. <laughs> it's just music. <laughs> it's, just, it's just music and, and then it's just the word bro id at the top. And yeah, and it's funny because the name of the video is Bro Id Video Game 2015 Trailer. Like it's not even like soundtrack sample. It's actually right. labeled as a trailer. Let's read some of these screenshots. Let's read the first one. <laughs> and you can be snake. I'll be eagle. You be bear. Wait, 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 wait. I gotta load it again. Okay. Wait. Uh, I wait. Wait. Who do you want me to be? Wait. Oh no, it's not. I thought this was dialogue. Shit. Is there dialogue here at all? There's just some, some. It's just descriptions. It's just a, yeah, he crawls in the in the cold and attack in the only one attack before moving, molting and being reborn. Eagle, it is in height, choosing its next one. Prey with a formidable patience and once in the throne seizure her to assimilate him in height. You read the bear one. Mm, do I have to? All yeah. right, fine. He is impressive, but not less fast. His sleep his sleep knows how to be patient. And he always show caution. Showing his terrifying strength that to require her, never by vanity. <laughs> I don't know with any of that. You know when you just when words like just become words and they don't actually like mean anything after a while. Like if you say the same word over and over again, it's just a collection of sounds. Yeah. That was, I just read words and I did not absorb a single thing I read. You see, when I read a nonsense description like that, I try to make it contextually flowing with grammar, even if that context is constantly changing. Like bro, it is a simulation realistic comment of the fact that can be an artificial intelligence of ground extra origin. Like you kind of put the inflection so that it almost something makes sense, but right. You try, but I mean, it's like, it again, it, yeah. Someone in chat just said YouTube bait, which is funny because I agree with that. That's like one yeah. of those games. Like there are some games that exist to get the attention of YouTubers because they're so wacky and ridiculous and crazy. And that seems like one of them. Like, oh, look at this broken sentence game. We'll have a lot of fun making fun of this. <laughs> yeah. And then they'll end up selling like a thousand copies as a result. And the development cost was like 10 bucks. And then they, they've made a thousand bucks. And suddenly they can go buy a dildo or something. I don't know. There you go. Troll game. Yep. Um, it also could just been translated because someone said each app is French. So maybe it was just oh. thrown through a translator and that was the or, or that. I don't know. Sure. Um, next one. 
In this action-adventure game, you take on the role of a young man who brandishes a pompadour of metal to cut down his foes. A pompadour of metal? Yep. I'm going to say that's that's fake. That is fake. That was submitted by Hollow Despair on Twitter. All right. <laughs> pompadour of metal. Minecraft. A World War II tactical shooter with Minecraft <laughs> graphics where you can craft things like poison gas and barbed wire. Is it spelled M-E-I-N? M-I-E-N. M-I-E-N, right? The German word for my. Yep. my and then my, craft my... with a K. My <laughs> Minecraft. <laughs> fake. That is fake. It, it was too timely with us talking about how many Minecraft things are but there that was from wienerless steve still like it a lot yeah that's a though. good one i almost said real i almost said real yeah all right <laughs> a deep soul searching game where you play as a ham sandwich exploring the streets of new york city Fake. called who ham i ah oh the name of this game makes me angry um but I think it's 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 actually kind of clever in a way. So yeah, it's real. No, <laughs> fake. It's fake. Which one? It's fake. You Final sure? answer. Fake. Who am yeah. I? <laughs> oh God, why is this so hard? Who am I'd say you? <laughs> God, I don't know. I don't know who I am anymore. I don't know who <laughs> you I don't know am. who you ham, Vinny. I don't know. It's, who it's you fake. ham? It's fake. It is fake. That was also Wienerless Steve. You almost he you almost flip flopped there when the title came up. Who am yeah. I? Yeah, That's that good. was. I thought it was really clever, so I figured maybe the, the, that would be like like some developer was like, I got a great idea for a game name, and then someone else was like, well, let's just make it anyway. <laughs> so good job, Wienerless Steve. All right, a couple more, and then okay. we'll we'll call it a, a podcast. Your mission is to shave the president's beard from Washington to Obama. Just don't <laughs> cut his neck, or you're dead. <laughs> Uh, that could be real. I've seen some dumb games. With, like we've seen Frozen All off Daddy's Cummies. Well, that was um, that was fake. But right, no, no. I mean the the Elsa give Babby that one. Yeah, yeah, that was real. For, uh, uh, I'm gonna say this is real. This is fake. This was submitted by RDNX, who I think has fooled you with each of his that he's ever submitted. Oh my submitted. god! Uh, oh yeah. My, god. That, my favorite part is shave the president's beard from Washington to Obama. Obama. I sh God damn it, I should have known. <laughs> not not even apostrophe on that. From Washington to Obama. That's good. Um, team Chat Simulator. A text-based RTS that challenges you to disappoint your teammates in order to lose the match. Oh, shit. Oh, I could see that being one of those those stupid games that, that the description sells it. Uh, I'm going to say it's real. That is fake. That was submitted uh, by... So many fakes in a row. Yeah, the original TBCR. Indeed. God damn it, Mor Morty. I mean, I'm KY. Yeah, I, I mean, I do this on a random number generator. I know. Keep that know. in mind, so no I bias know. here. None. I, I know. It's Asian Jesus' time to shine in Oriental Fury. Dispense oh. justice against the evil General So and his master, Buddha. No. Fake. We were just talking about General So's chicken. There's no way that's real. That you're right, it's fake. Okay. Thank God. That Thank would have been God. amazing if that was real, just due to the to the discussion. But yeah, that was submitted by Lulks fifteen twelve on Twitter. Good. Sweet Jesus. <laughs> you ready? Yeah, I guess. Stick shift is an auto erotic night driving game about pleasuring your gay car. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's real. I've played it. Oh, you have? Oh, yeah, shit. Well, there you go. You fucking cheater, you. Yeah, stick shift. I, I didn't I didn't realize that I was... Did, I never knew the description of it was so blunt. But, Th yeah, I've played this that. Game <laughs> played that. has been greenlit by the community. Wow. I love that. Yep. Pleasure your gay car. <laughs> it, there's really not much to the game. You play it for literally five minutes and you're done. So I don't I don't know why this was greenlit, but... Oh, my you, God, his the face. Trailer. Yeah, I know. The trailer gives you everything. That face about 15 seconds in when he starts the car and he closes his eyes and tilts his head back. Yep. Yep. That's that's oh. what makes the game funny. Um, I enjoyed playing it just for the faces alone. <laughs> but but it's, it's not much game here. The thing so. is, his looking animation is 
pretty decent when his eyes change directions. <laughs> yeah, it's not a terrible looking game. It's just no, the UI is wasted. Oh my god, surprisingly impressive UI for for what the game is. An auto erotic game by Robert Yang. That is amazing. Right. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. Hmm. Imagine a world where you can kill your friends over social networks. Be the social killer. Uh, tr <laughs> true. It's real. That's fake. That was submitted by Wodar Melon. Uh, <laughs> uh, be the social killer. Yeah, uh, it, it sounds like it could be, again, could be. one of those games that, you know, just like a social media type. Yeah. Like parody, parody game. I, I I was expecting since Papers Please that there would be more, like uh, I don't know. Information, based like interpreting information type games. You sure. Know? And that's totally what that would fall into. Shoot people with your Stomlin assets from the Unmity and Enbajin in dot 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 dot. Shoot people until they bleed JPEG blood. Oh my God. Should I read that please again? Please don't. Please don't tell me that's real. Well, it's, let me it's... read it again. You never know. Read it again. Yeah, read right. it again. Shoot people with your Stonlin assets from the Unmity Enbajin in. Shoot people until they bleed JPEG blood. It's real. That's fake, no. son. No. no, no, you, you, you locked into your choice. I tell you why I said it's uh, no, never okay. mind. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't justify have yourself. Go ahead. There's no justification. There's I don't. I don't have one. Sorry. It's, I it's, would play it though. I, I fucked it. My st those I would play it. assets. That seems like an Xbox 360 arcade game because I've played a lot of fucking bad Xbox 360 arcade games that are intentionally bad on purpose with misspellings and leet speak. So that could have been real, but I'm glad it's not. Anyway, next. Yep. All right. Manage an outdated VHS store while defending it against hipsters in this RTS business management simulator. Say again? Repeat that? Okay. Manage an outdated VHS store <laughs> while defending it against hipsters in this RTS <laughs> business management simulator. That sounds like Red Letter Media is half in the bag show. It, it also sounds like um, yeah. Be Kind Rewind a little bit. Do you see that movie with uh, Jack Black and Most Def? Oh, Jack Blackcock. No, I haven't seen him in the, in that movie. Um, no, I haven't. I haven't seen the movie, but it sounds like it. I'm gonna say it's real. As I expect, disappointment. That is fake. I'm sorry. Oh God! Every every ever everything, Morty forever. Everything forever. Yeah, it's that was original TBCR. Um, oh. and that's about all I got for Greenlight Guess. I did all the the pre, uh, prepped real ones if i could look up more real ones for you but i wouldn't have links for you right away if you would like okay no uh, that's you want, fine or do you, you want to call it there or you want to do a few more oh i'm good <laughs> okay well that was I'd fun like, yeah yeah why well, there is something i'd like to do right now what's that for a moment and it's just just if you give me a second here okay the world can be one together cosmos without hatred stars like Diamonds in your eyes. <laughs> so, Happy uh, hell. But uh, that's, by the way, that's from that Jermaine. That's a Jermaine song, and hey. I—that's what I've been doing today. You'll hear it, Rick and Morty, episode two, season two. It's amazing. Anyway, um, w what else are we doing now? So, green light guess is over. Now, is—is is it time for us to? Um, what's? Uh, how do you say it when you consummate the relationship? Um. Cons consummate do uh, doc i think doc it's all right gotcha doc with the chat you know we're gonna <laughs> well we've docked many times and now we're gonna dock with you guys for one last supply drop off before we peace out and one the last starry expanse um it was fun so we're gonna do more green light guests next episode uh or maybe the one after so keep submitting them i'll include the best ones since i'm sure there'll be a lot uh if someone wants to reach us on listeners mail for the next non-live episode what email would they do it at Vinny? they they would do it at um two number two 
on the vinecast at gmail.com. Nice. Nailed Did I get it. it? Nailed it. Wow. You know, over the weekend, I forgot someone's name who I had met at least a dozen and a oh half times. Oh, my God. You're, are you serious? Because I did the yeah. same exact thing at work. Yep. Someone asked who I was working with in that room, and I looked at this girl, and I knew her name. I would talked with her. I've known her for months, and I had a total brain fart, and I had to answer this question, and I didn't know what to do. So I just said – I looked at her and said, uh, this is awful, but what's your name again? <laughs> and she looked at me like, are you serious? And she was like, Victoria. And then it came back. I was like, yeah, duh, Victoria. You know Vicky. Rest in peace, Victoria. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, shame. <laughs> but she understood. She's really cool. She was like, no, it's all right. And that's that's what happens. So, uh, yeah, two on the vine cast at gmail.com. Monotonous, just post it in chat. Uh, submit your green light guesses to the hashtag green light mm-hmm. guess, and I'll include them in the next episode. Uh, follow two on the vine on Twitter. Follow my channel, which you are watching right now, or if you're watching being host from Vinny's, it's uh, Live by Foma. If you don't know Vinny's channel for whatever reason, it's twitch.tv slash vine sauce. I, th- I think they know my channel, yeah, but if, yeah. if they don't, then don't worry about it. <laughs> and uh, what's your Twitter, Vinny Vine Sauce? Yeah, the Twitter is just Vinny Vine Sauce. Um, um, yep. You know. It's, oh, I, I have an Instagram now. If anyone's curious, wow. so I post some Vine Sauce stuff there. I've had it for a long time. I just never used it, but I, I post a little bit of Vine Sauce related stuff and some stuff in, from the studio in there. I figure um, my friends apparently like to keep up on the Vine Sauce Instagram hashtag for Vine Sauce, right? Yeah. So they keep up on that, and then they tell me about the stuff that goes on there, and they're like, "My God, Vinny, I had no idea th- this many people." We're talking yeah. about you and posting your pictures and stuff. And I was like, I guess I got to get an Instagram. Yeah. So it's just Vine underscore sauce. Yep. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Our Twitter, actually, the two on the Vine, the dedicated two on the Vine Twitter is only 47 follows from a thousand. Only Let's 47. change that tonight, guys. Yeah. Go on to Twitter. If you've got a Twitter, you should follow the two on the Vine official Twitter page, which is... <laughs> I was about to um, link it, and then I almost just linked stick shift instead because that was still in my paste. Uh, yeah, it's just two on the vine with the number two. I just number number two. Chat. So <laughs> it's not it's not two on the vine cast. It's just or, number yeah. two Sorry. on the vine. Yeah, just two on the vine on Twitter. Um, yeah, um, we'll do the next episode again soon. We're not going to do another live one for a little while, but uh, keep an eye on the Twitter because that's where we always say when. <laughs> We're going to have the next episode and all that stuff. Uh, last thing, absolute last thing I want to say, if you enjoy the show, please tell your friends. That's all you got to do. Uh, word of mouth is so helpful. And uh, just, you know, thank you. Thank you so much for, for uh, I mean, subscribe on iTunes. Leave a rating, leave a review, anything like that that you want to. If you liked the podcast, do that and it will help us out a lot. That's right. And, you know, there's so much positive energy we get from the audience that listens to this podcast. And it's so fun to do it, which is why I'm quitting the show. And I'd like to thank you all for <laughs> for the many months of joy and stuff. But now it's, it's time for us to end. So I can only say goodbye, moon men. Goodbye, <laughs> moon men. Sorry, but uh, go- goodbye, everyone. Bye. See you next time. <laughs> Bye. Can we? Can I talk now? No, the music's playing.